of a you know like it's nice to listen to the full conversation without like anything taken out I think. yeah so. yeah totally I, I i i agree with that for sure but i'm doing some video here so it started recording and okay. I'm, I'm all ready dude cool so let's do this so you're um first of all let's uh, just start off to your andy worski yes my name is andy worski and uh sorry what was your i mean begin revolution do you have a have a name that you go by or are you like just purely anonymous Purely anonymous, yeah. All right, cool. I'll call you Revolution then. <laughs> whatever, you, yeah, just whatever works. As, as long as you don't say my actual name, and I'll be like, nah, don't use that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good, dude. <laughs> yeah, but that might give it away. I'll just play it cool if you do. I'll just be like, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, cool, cool. All right. Uh, so I've the reason I watched your video today is because fucking Sorsha, um was just like, check this out. I finally got some fucking hate replies. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, and, uh, okay, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, well, just do like, um, I'll, like, I'll tell my perspective, but I'll, I will get you to fill in on the bits where I'm just like, what, what the fuck happened here? So, for first sure. of all, so I click on your channel, and like, you've got a bunch of fucking subscribers, man, for YouTube, like, you've got quite a big channel, man. Yeah, yeah, it's growing. How long have you been running that? Like, what's the... Well, to be honest with you, I've been doing it for about seven years, however, I did okay. drop off the map. For about two years, I quit. I filmed two full-length feature films and decided uh, that I missed YouTube really bad in September. Started started just posting every now and then. And then since uh, beginning of April is when I really got the hang of like my channel and finding more of a focus, which is my uh, dumbest ever series, uh, you know, rants. And uh, now what I'm doing with... The Sorsha video is sort of just giving a perspect my perspective and yeah. not trying to be funny, just more of an intelligent, I mean, like, quote, unquote, I mean, some people might not see it as intelligent, obviously, uh, but uh, just my stance on on what I think about certain things. So it's going yeah. great now. So I'm, I'm really happy with it. Yeah, man. So you've got your audience and it's, um, and yeah, so you'd obviously like, how did you come across her video? Okay. So now that... Now here, here's the thing. Now here, this is very interesting. So I was, um, I'm a subscriber of uh, Mr. Repsion, and he made a video uh, replying to vegan Dude, gains. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Well, Mr. Repsion, like, what's your thoughts on him first of all? Because I'm aware of this guy. Like, uh, you know, I, I like him. I don't agree with everything that he says. However, I like his stance on a lot of things. While cer certain things, I'm just sort of like, eh. But he's a good guy, and I really, I don't like to judge people primarily based on a view that I'm not happy with. Like, I'm usually a happy person. I mean, you look at my channel and you go, holy fuck, he's an asshole to a lot of people. However, deep down inside, I can try and see the good in most people. I mean, there are, you know, a mer like, like a, a rapist or a killer or someone who, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's an obvious no. However, even though I don't agree with all of his uh, viewpoints, I still think he's cool. He's a nice guy and he's, he's learning. I'm watching him grow. You know, he was like, I was watching him when he was like, what, 16. Now he's 20, whatever. And yeah, that's what I like about him. It seems like you're growing with someone, you know, I'm just going to tell it like it is with my opinion of Mr. Repsion. Sure. He comes across as someone who's failed to get attention from the people he respects to the point where he's had to become like so, like a child, like a bratty child who like thrives off negative attention by saying the thing, which in a way is entertaining because he's kind of like saying shit. But the thing is, he's kind of it's it's good when he uses it against sort of like people who need calling out. But sometimes he's just doing it because like that's like his version of having friends on the internet. You know what? That's the okay. What you're saying there is something I can definitely uh, relate to into the things that I don't like about him. Yeah, okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes they'll make a video. I'm like, why? Like, you're you're picking on like someone who's obviously like not all there, or just you know, like you know what I mean? It's sort of like finding those easy targets and smashing them. Whereas, yeah, when he's he's calling out someone who needs it, it's it's awesome. That's why there's that love hate relationship. However, overall, I think deep down he's he's he means like well. You know what I mean? But he has an audience too, though. I mean, he has attention from a lot of people. 
What's his motivation behind all of it, though? Is it just to get subscribers, or has he got a message? You're like, yeah, that's the that's the thing. That's the thing. I can't really pinpoint with him. I think, I think it's. I mean, a lot of it might be clickbait. You know, like, oh, yeah. this this chick's a, a a bitch because this, or this guy's an ass because this, and then you're like, I want to click this video, see what he's talking about. And there's some things that I don't. Like there was one video that pissed me right the fuck off that I, <laughs> I that I literally shook my head and I I tried messaging him and emailing and commenting and blah 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 and nothing not even a fuck off dude which is I would appreciate that <laughs> you know what I mean that's why honestly when I woke up I was so shocked today to go on my like see at replies fifty plus I'm like. What the hell happened while I was sleeping? Yeah, yeah. And then me and you sort of went at it, but I yeah. I didn't want you to immediately hate me until we had a discussion. That was primarily the reason I, call, I, I called out Sorsha. It wasn't about hate. It was about, <laughs> hey, message me back. I think you were being horrendous in your video. Here's my reasons why. Let's talk about it. Let's find a medium where we could both be happy. Because it just sort of feels like, it feels like this thing where this like, you're putting your fingers on your ears and you're like, la, 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 I don't want to hear it. Whereas I think we should talk about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, yeah. The best quote I ever heard like in regards to that, there's this fucking guy who like, um, he was one of the first guys to, uh, like, psychologists to um, be given a load of acid and just be asked to experiment on people with it. <laughs> and um, and so he, he be, and he was like from uh, like Harvard as a psychologist. This guy called Richard Alpert. Mm -hmm. And um, so he he's got like this fucking like whole vat of fucking acid ready to go. And it's like, and they're just like, go and do your experiments on people with it. You know, like you go do your thing. And he's like, I think I'll need a budget to go to like India and just see what happens to people who. Because he's heard about these people who meditate a lot and they get to a weird state of mind. He wants to see what happens to those people when they take it. Wow. Um, he fucking exactly. goes, he goes out there and the first guy he gives it to, who's like, he finds like the guy who's like this guy who's on another fucking level. Like he doesn't, you know, he just seems content all the time. And then, like, he's just got like, this group of followers and he finds this guy and he's like, right, we've got this thing. Like, uh, he's done it himself a bit. And uh, he's like, He's like, yeah, if, uh, if, if you could take some, like, that'd be great. And the guy looks at the bottle and he's like, um, and he's like considering it. And he's thinking, I'm going to have to talk him into this. This is like a human guinea pig thing. This isn't okay. And the guy just like opens it up and drinks all of it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> he fucking drinks, like, I mean, not the whole lot that he took out, but like this fucking like vial of acid, right? You meant a fucking like blotting paper touch this shit, like whatever. You, all you need is a drop and you're good. <laughs> 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 and you're and you're flying to space, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, this is the thing. So he's he's sitting there and he's like he's setting his fucking like stopwatch. Like this is going to be interesting in forty minutes. <laughs> like, you know I mean? And the guy didn't fucking change. The guy was just in his same meditative state. And like and then a few hours later, they were like, "So did anything happen?" And he was like, he goes, "Yeah, it was like I didn't have to try to meditate so much, but it's basically the same for me." <laughs> Wow, that's phenomenal. You know, I'm I'm really, really heavy into meditation, and I have figured out that spot in my brain. It's like yeah. more. It's not even a brain thing. It's more like a feeling. Like uh, I I call it out of body experience. I've been uh, experimenting with lucid dreaming and, and meditation for a long time. I mean, it's not to the level where I could be an, on an acid trip, because <laughs> that would be a crazy, a crazy amount of control. But. Yeah. I've never done acid, but I've done shrooms quite a bit over the last sort of like three or four years, and um, like They're, sort of uh, yeah, don't it's awesome. <laughs> you, What's that? It's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. It's great. <laughs> have you done shrooms? Like, have you had a little go on the on the shrooms? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not much of a chemical taker on drugs. Yeah. I I don't like cocaine, any of that. Like you know, obviously yeah. heroin, crack, all that stuff. But anything natural, such as marijuana, shrooms. All that stuff. I've tried them, and it's great. I mean, I have nothing bad to say about it. Besides the fact is, you know, obviously be responsible. Don't don't take shrooms and drive type thing. Obviously, I've done that. I've, I was fucking stupid on that. I've done them with like random people I've met on the internet. I was like, oh, let's meet up and go to some woods and. Yeah, and then yeah. suddenly, like, halfway through, I'm just like, I wake up in a fucking river and I bet my headphones. And I'm like, where the fuck are they? And what was their name? Like, <laughs> and like. <laughs> 
get yourself out of those situations where you suddenly go like someone could have died tonight and I'd have to explain that to their fucking parents on the news like Horrific, it's like yeah said, like so when I talk about shrooms I also give out a bit of a warning message like just fucking don't be an idiot like me basically so like they didn't die it was all good but it was just like a fucking it, it was like nighttime in this fucking woods that we'd never been to before yeah. like, somewhere I'd never been before I woke up and there was just fog and I was like what's my own name like that that's oh like oh my god i actually yo i actually did them in the forest a dark forest with a few yeah. friends and there was one point where everyone was tripping out so bad that i stepped on this plant that was sort of like um it had like vines coming out of it yeah. and when i stepped on it in my imagination it had wrapped around my legs and i'm like help me everybody and then all my friends were screaming and trying to pull me <laughs> Uh, off this plant and then we were all laying there hugging on the ground <laughs> and they're like don't worry man we gotcha we gotcha <laughs> that sounds pretty, like i've I'm, oh, man we can talk about shrooms a lot because like i've got a lot of fucking shroom stories but... yeah yeah we could do a whole podcast on that <laughs> go full fuck yeah but it's um but th this is the weird thing right so like um so anyway, you watched the Mr. Repsion video. I'm guessing that led you to Vegan Gains. Vegan Gains led you to Sasha, and now we're talking, right? Yeah, well, I mean, okay, the thing in my video I mentioned about him uh, is when I, I had said he's an asshole and all this stuff, but when I yeah. said I added the, 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 uh, uh, the sentence that yeah. I don't hate him, the reason is a lot of his facts are true, 100%. I'm not denying the health benefits of, dude, dude, of, of what, veganism. You, you did it in the wrong order. Like, as, as someone in the film industry, you should know that like, it's all about the shit sandwich. Like, you start off going, I, I kind of think I like this guy and he's interesting. And then you go, but he is an asshole. And then you end with the fucking positive again. If you put negative and then the positive, yeah, people yeah. are like, oh, he fucking hates that guy. Like, they're always here the first thing, man. Like, yeah, well, yeah. well, I mean, the thing is, too, is the thing that I dislike about him and this will follow my point with Sorsha, her video, yeah. is the fact that rather than give great information, which he does, and then he shows his evidence, yes. um, he follows it up with, I hope you die, get cancer, you, you love rape, you're into rape. Like, in, it, it's like this, it's like what he's doing, it's like if I was trying to, let's say, spread it, uh, you, you, say I was religious, I was Catholic, and I want to spread it, right? That's like yeah. me saying, hey, there's God, he's awesome, you're all heading to hell because you don't believe in him right now. You think you, you, you're all just, just, just evil and terrible, and then everyone listening is just like, wait, what the hell? Like, the message is lost. I could, of course, read to you some great Bible verses that would make you at least think introspectively but when i follow it up with i hope you die you're gonna walk away so my point with him is the fact that as much as i love the passion and the information yeah. um, whether it be true or not i mean that's obviously to whose discretion is listening to it um the fact that he follows it up with a constant like like, I watch Happy Healthy Vegan, and I'll explain what my diet is like very soon to you, but okay. he, I love that guy. He literally makes me happy and want to attempt to maybe change my diet, maybe change it up. But when okay. Vegan Gains came along, it literally gave me a headache, primarily because I actually knew Furious Pete back in the day, and watching him go through cancer made me very sad because I've had a lot of people in my life pass away from that. And um, when he made cancer seem like such a trivial thing, whether the meat gave him cancer or not, it doesn't matter. Cancer is caused by a lot of variables in everyone's life, as you know. Um, it made me so upset, man. Like, I really wish I could tell you that I could hear it and go, well, he's just saying the infer, you know, but like this guy like just went through trauma, horrific trauma and to trivialize it made me sad. That's why my, my views on him being an asshole arose 
where I'm like, hey, listen, if you hate someone for their a belief or their ideology, that's totally cool if you throw punches, right? But when you start throwing death and cancer and like really dark stuff, when someone's going through a tough time, like if he had said it like this, if he had said it like this, you're furious, Pete, man, like I think you should ch uh, change your diet. And that's why you may have got cancer. I mean, and then explain information. But when him going, no wonder he got cancer. I'm surprised he didn't get it sooner. Makes me feel like, bro, you used to eat meat too. You have said it. M maybe if you had, sp maybe if you speak to people in a more productive and friendlier manner, they'll open their ears and they'll listen to you. It's not, I'm not. In my video, I swear to you, man, I'm not even just saying this to be fucking, like, I mean, I, I've been thinking about our debate all day. It's been because my Twitter's blowing up, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, I must say, uh, as much hate as I got initially, all my sort of responses got a lot of people following me and me following them and then, like, messaging me, you know what, Andy, you're not that bad. I want to hear what you and Revolution have to say. And yeah. then I was like, thank you very much. And, I, I, and honestly, man, from the deepest part of my heart, my dumbest tweets ever where I make fun of people who say stupid stuff that are, that's ignorant, um, yeah. or ignorant, is purely based on a, a comedy stance. It's, it's like, he said something stupid and this and that. But when, I, but when we're talking about people's health, life, cancer, and horrific things like that, let's all have a seat and discuss Rather than pointing fingers, claiming that you're, you're for rape and this and that. And I, that's why I really want my channel to be more than just dumbest whatever. You know what I mean? Because I have a lot of beliefs and a lot of things. And then that sort of stemmed off of Sorsha. When I saw her and her claiming that meat eater... Or, or, or I actually read something on her Twitter that upset me. If you consume dairy then you endorse or condone rape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of like, it's like, and then you like, like I know, I, I knew, I know one girl who got raped and it oh. ruined it. Like it took a, to I'm a very sensitive person as, I mean, it's a surprise, but it took such a toll on me that when I read that tweet, it literally tore my heart out. And I was literally, uh, legitimately trying to contact Sorsha uh, through private messages and through comments to ask her what she me means by that because okay I personally don't consume any dairy uh, primarily because I'm lactose intolerant and it ruins my life <laughs> okay like it literally I like I have to shit for 45 minutes like you know what I mean uh, <laughs> so I, I have I, I drink vanilla almond milk that's my thing right I, that's the only uh, dairy but it's not even dairy it's vanilla almond milk but um, yeah. but my mother, my mother, you know, she's an older woman. She's 55. She's from Portugal. They had cows. They milked the cows, like, on the farm. I was a kid. I would be there, and I would milk the, the cows, and, and I would drink the milk straight from the, the tip. Warm, like, creamy, oh, delicious. Yeah, and yeah. When, when I was a child, and to think that, a, that, that this girl, Sorsha, just called my mom a rape endorser condoner is so ridiculous that i was trying to reach out to her and be like can we like talk about variables age place of birth mentality ideology before we say that everyone who drinks milk or consumes dairy to be a rapist that's that's where i was coming from and the reason i got so upset in that video man was like the comparing a meat eater to a racist and a sexist. It was okay. phenomenally ridiculous. Now, yeah, sorry, I'm I'm fucking rambling. I'll let you have a have a speak now. Yeah, let me just chip in because like, so the reason I told you the acid story. You remember the acid story? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, sorry. I <laughs> talking about shrooms and got sidetracked. It's um. So what happened is Richard Alpert goes out to India and he sees this guy and the guy takes the acid, and then Harvard fucking psychology unit are like, hang on, isn't that guy meant to have come back by now? It's been a few months. <laughs> so that's from him. And he didn't come back, man. He changed his name to Baba Ram Das and he just like sort of, uh, he went really deep into learning psychology through this sort of like Eastern side of it. 
And then he like traveled to China and then eventually came back to America in sort of like the late 70s. And um, his whole philosophy was this concept of be here now, which is like this idea of um, like pre the power of now, but it was that similar kind of concept where you can get to a state in your mind where you're, you're not sort of mind fucking yourself. You're just completely living in the moment. You're not doubting yourself. You're not questioning yourself. You're just there, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so one of the bits, one of the words of wisdom that he said that really stuck with me, that's all this was building up to, was um, uh, he said, if you ever create a resistance against something, you'll create an equal resistance within it. So if you're fighting something, you're responsible for it existing if it's the problem that you want to change. And so the only way in which to change it is to let it become part of what you are by sort of opening up to it. Um, and so I think that's basically what you've just said. It's like, you don't want to come into this having an argument, a debate, a fucking rap battle, or whatever. You want to come into this and say, um, let's understand each other. It's not about who's right. It's like, let's just fucking understand each other. And I'm completely, I saw all these people on Twitter like, oh yeah, you're going to get destroyed by the vegan revolution. He's really good at it. And, I, and I'm like, a little bit of my ego sort of like, oh, well, I am good at debating. That's true. I have thought about this a lot. But then on the other hand, I'm just like, I just feel like it's all these people like, at school where there's something like, oh, fight, 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 yeah. fight. There's two people I stand agree. And they're just like, neither of us want to fight, but everyone's shouting fight. Yeah. <laughs> you know? like, Actually, there was one guy that really pissed me off when I had mentioned on, on one of the tweets to you about, mm. uh, um, um, about like, uh, or, or it just whatever, whoever I was responding to, I said something along the lines of animal welfare. And then one of my... Uh, Twitter followers, who's like a fan of mine, I had seen him a million times, yeah. he had messaged me and you with, at, uh, like, um, at Vegan Revolutions, at Andy Worski, Andy, what are you talking about fucking stupid animal welfare? And I let him have it, man. <laughs> I'm like, do you get that the entire thing I'm trying to do by responding to everyone and calm the situation before me and you had a conversation what, that was the opposite thing that I was trying to say. And then I'm like, before you, animal welfare, like tortured animals, like, believe me, man, I was defending you all off my own f ridiculous followers really too. You know what I mean? Oh, and I was kind of like, like, I've only, like, last week I set up this hashtag, me tired of the day, and each day it's just like fucking destroyed someone's evening. <laughs> 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 you know, honestly, man, I won't even say, I, I won't even lie. I, uh, I'm a comedian. I do stand up and yep. I enjoy like, you know, ripping <laughs> on people. When you had done that, dude, I'm not even joking you. It put a smile to my face. <laughs> I was like, oh, I feel, I feel honored. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that I could put I'm that much impact. You know what I mean? The prestige uh, of like winning. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, exactly. You know, that's the best way to react because like, to me that's someone who's open-minded. Like, the only way to be like a comedian or I think even any sort of storyteller, filmmaker, whatever. And like, We've got a lot in common, man. Like, we've got similar facial hair. <laughs> nice. We've both got our podcast. You're recording this for yours, I'm recording this for mine, whatever. It's yes. fucking, so like, we've got this doppelganger situation. And another thing I just wanted to bring up real quick is I'm actually interviewing Vegan Games tomorrow. Yes, yes. Good. You were saying, yeah. And I think that's going to be a really interesting conversation because I haven't, he's done one interview with uh, this one vegan woman who puts out really good like educational content and she's like, she's like what you're saying veganism should be promoted like. Okay. And for them to do a collaboration where they, uh, she interviewed him was like her saying, I honor what you're doing, even though I've got my method and you've got yours, we've both got the same message and we can like, we can, we don't have to fucking like like argue internally within the vegan community about our different methods, just like whatever works based on individual preferences. And it was really nice to see that collaboration, but it was like, it was like a sort of fucking seven minute thing or whatever. It might have been longer than that, it might have been 15, but whatever, like I, when I do podcasts, I go for fucking four hours. Like it's a yeah, yeah, that's like, I'll go on until I'm tired. <laughs> Basically, yeah, yeah. Oh shit, like I haven't plugged the fucking laptop in. <laughs> just give me a minute, and then it's like, fuck it, let's end it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, so like and you know i think that's um so yeah i'm going to be talking to him and i think a lot of these things are going to come up because obviously uh 
I can kind of see it from his perspective. I can see it from your perspective. I think he can probably see it from both. But the fact that we're talking about him right now and he's grown that many subscribers in that amount of months, like six months to almost 60,000 subscribers. It works. Uh, it works. Like, I, 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 I agree. Yeah, totally. I think he's a tactical motherfucker and he's just like, he knows what he's doing. Do you know what I mean? And, and, uh, and that is totally why in my video I said that's why I don't hate him because I right. understand... I mean, that's what I do. If I read dumb tweets and I went, that was stupid, and I went to the next one, you'd be yeah. like, okay, I'm not going to watch this guy. That's why I over, over, I make it as intense as possible and yeah. really bring out the inner rage and passion. So Each video counts. Yeah, man. That, <laughs> so, so that's why I said I'm a fucking asshole too. He, yeah. he, he can be one. That's why I am one too. Uh, so yeah, so like that's, that's why I don't hate him. And a lot of people do because it's so easy to hate someone who's smashing your way of life and saying die and cancer and this and blah, 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 da, da, da. That's sort of why I saw. But you know what, Matt? Again, again, I, I have to just add this in again that I agree with a lot of his points. And you know what? Uh, the people that he bashes that make those supplements that have, um, have, have ingredients that do that, that that cause more harm to the body uh, a body than not. Yeah. I, I I smash that. Yeah, totally, totally. But when you yes. compare every meat eater into as one person, you know what I mean. And yeah. and the reason I say that is because primarily my source of protein intake is rice protein as well as. A vegetable protein. That's what I prefer because I told you I'm lactose intolerant. Like, you drink vanilla almond milk and you like eat fucking... You basically are a vegan already. You, can't, you know what? Like, but that's the thing. See, that's why I wanted to open this dialogue with Sorsha, but she hasn't yeah. responded to me. Was I actually have here what I had for lunch today, which was oh, my oh. Vega Sport protein. Uh, it is a plant-based protein. That's the only one that I take. I used to take uh, okay. whey isolate, but it really hurt my stomach, and I don't, I I didn't like the uh, the reaction my body was having from it. And I I I'm trying to bodybuild right now, and I primarily use plant based and rice based proteins because rice based is my favorite flavor of uh, protein, and yeah. it's it's giving me like I'm lean and I'm j I'm getting jacked through only that type of protein. The dude, dude, hang on, hang on. You work at Whole Foods as well. That's something you told me. Like, I do. Yes, I work at Whole Foods. I'm there every day. <laughs> you're like a you're like a vegan stereotype. That, like, I, I actually yeah. for lunch today, you you'll be proud. I had wild <laughs> mushroom pizza, which had five types of mushroom on it, pepper, all this stuff. And then for bra uh, uh, for breakfast, I had oatmeal with hemp protein. A scoop of that put right in because I shop primarily at Whole Foods. And like yep. I said before, that I only uh, buy um, – if I do buy meat, which is – honestly, I'll be honest. I'm not much of a meat eater because uh, I don't like what it does to my heart. It feels like I might have uh, palpitations if I eat a lot of meat. Uh, yep. So I, I primarily um, – I, I only – I eat eggs that are from free run uh, uh, chickens. Ever since two years ago, I watched a video about the, f oh, um, it was that movie, what was it called? Chicken Run. Not Chicken Run, it was uh, another, it was one of the, it was like the most. Oh, Thanksgiving sort of thing was it? Like... Honestly, it, it okay, the, yeah. uh, the cover had a field and a cow on it. And, uh, and it was on Netflix and it made me sick to my stomach. Oh, food. Fooding. That's it, that's it, fooding. The force feeding, right. the little cages, the deep beaking, it made me so sick. Yeah, that, like, that's why I buy only free run eggs. I, I will only eat chicken if I come over to my mom's house and she puts it in soup. Like, I'm going to eat it because it's there. I don't yeah. seek out meat. <laughs> this is, I don't eat bacon anymore because it hurts my heart. And two years ago, my dad had a heart attack. He's fine now. Alive and kicking, and he's very healthy now. Uh, he's he's, yeah. he, he's a, almost a vegetarian pretty much now. And um, he's that scare is what made me quit smoking cigarettes and eating uh, plant-based proteins, as well as free-run eggs for more protein and sort of slow down and almost pretty much stop eating meats 
Uh, again, I do eat it, but again, like at Whole Foods yesterday, I ate uh, mock pork. So it's like a uh, uh, tofu pork with okay. salad. It's delicious, man. I'm like, oh my God. Huh. I'm like, these vegetarians got it right. <laughs> it was good, you know? Okay, um, where do I go from here, man? Like, okay, let's just let's change the format of this a little bit. Like, let's go back into a bit more because this, um, yeah. this is what I've got to say to you, man. It's like, uh, I watched your video and I saw a guy who was like r right on the verge of wanting to understand it. But like, what I saw was the same as like a kid who's like, oh, like, but Santa Claus brings me presents, so he must be real. <laughs> That's, I, I saw a, a guy right on the verge of that thing who was ready to accept like a new truth where it was like oh maybe I've been lied to for a while okay um, but at the same time you're just clinging on to the old thing because it's like but now the old thing like, like that would be leaving my childhood behind like there's all these reasons why you can do it and I saw a lot of the things you said you like contradicted later on you're like yeah I'll stick anything in my body I'm like not fussy and then later on you're like oh, I only buy certain kinds of meat you know I won't just stick anything like in my okay, mouth okay but Hang on, hang on. Uh, may I just add that yeah. that when I said that, as well as like the raped chicken thing, uh, that I, I, is my inner comedian just okay, yeah. bleeding out. You know what I mean? So yeah. it does it does blur the line between reality. I just told you I I only I, I have the Vega protein and also Warrior Blend protein, um, all vegetable based, and my protein bars are Vega and. I, I I said that, but again, yeah. I'm just saying it. It was almost like a fuck you. I'll do whatever I want. That's what it was. <laughs> it wasn't like a I'll eat shit or I'll. You know what I mean? It was sort of like a. My point is, if Isn't someone, like, I'm sorry. Is that a bit like Napoleon Dynamite though? Like in your head, it's like fuck you. I'll do whatever you want. I want, and then like it's like oh, I'm gonna do whatever I want to do, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 yeah, because. The only reason I, I, I'm, I'm saying that is I'm defending meat eaters in the yeah. sense of I don't want a person to see someone eating a pepperoni pizza and then walk up to them and be like, you enjoy murder, don't you? You know what I mean? It kind of makes me like upset and sick that like maybe this person doesn't like doesn't care or has a different ideology and I understand that you're trying to change people's mindsets which is awesome but I don't feel that anyone has the right to be like you can't do that and if you do you believe in rape you know what I mean so, so this is the thing like so the, the conversation you're kind of open to this but I can see that there's some things that are like like your mum fucking milked cows or whatever so you've got some emotional attachments to some of the things I'm going to tell you and obviously Vegan gains and fucking Saoirse, Saoirse rhymes with Porsche. I always struggle with that fucking <laughs> pronunciation. Saoirse Marava rhymes with Porsche and lava. That's how I got that down. It's, um, yeah, it's fucking, uh, so th there's going to be certain like obstacles for you to like be able to understand me. And I understand where you're coming from because I've been there myself. Mm. So I think, um, let's just start like you're a filmmaker. You've seen the fucking Matrix more than once. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What I'm about to drop on you is bigger than the Santa Claus thing, and like this is the Matrix all at once. Okay, like if you're willing to go there in terms of like just hearing where I'm coming from. Of course, of course. Yeah, one of the yeah. reasons I have got like quite a big subscribership is because I basically quit my filmmaking career um, in the hope of like maybe doing vegan documentaries down the line, like travel vegan documentaries, like the kind of wacky journalism sort of stuff. You know, like those sort of like Vice, but for just veganism. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's starting to come about, but it's uh, like I spent a lot of time. Like I I knew that to get to that point, I'd really need to go into a sort of deep meditation with it. And I've used Twitter as a way of like just um, like constantly like expressing new thoughts. That I feel like no one else in the vegan community's got to in terms of like why is this the way it is, and how do we help other people who aren't there yet? In a sort of like in some Morpheus fucking like these people are our enemy until we can help them like fucking break free of where they're at. That's how I fucking see it. And that could be taken as like some fucking ISIS terrorist training shit where it's like we need to fucking... But the way I see it is it's like it's resetting you to what you already knew when you were a kid. But like you through like advertisements, like your culture, and also just through like the um, this kind of double bind cognitive dissonance where basically because you have done something, it it it's very hard for you to not be able to justify it to yourself because otherwise you'd have to feel bad about it. So it's like a sort of a protective mechanism in your brain to not deal with something. Does that make sense? 
Okay, may I just ask, uh, when you mean by protective mechanism in my brain, are you saying that my def my defending meat eaters is sort of like a byproduct of my existence throughout and it's sort of hindering me from maybe taking that step into being a vegan? Is that what you mean? Let me explain it this way, like slavery was on wasn't that many generations back and like the last couple of generations still had a lot of fucking underground racism going on mm -hmm. um went to the point where it's still kind of like the majority of people in a lot of places and um it takes like a very free mind when slavery was actually around in fucking america or whatever to like just look at it and be like actually this is wrong even though my family owns slaves i get served by slaves and it actually benefits me because it means I don't have to fucking pick my own cotton for my t-shirt or whatever. <laughs> so it's yeah. there. And I'm saying like a lot of people have this kind of concept where it's like, oh, we've evolved to this point and now we're here. Like this is, this is it. And I'm saying like they probably thought that when they had slaves. They were like, oh, we've got nothing new to learn and we've developed to our full possibility and this is as kind as the human race will ever get and we've got slaves. But like there, there would have been some people that like known as abolitionists who were like, like white people and black people. Who were um, who just knew that it was fucking wrong and woke up to it. And once they had that conviction, in them, they were like, "We need to end this because it's not right." Like maybe in, just because it says in the Bible, like, "Oh, we can own black people." That might just be because they rewrote the Bible to tell us that that's what we need to believe in. Like that sort of level of fucking programming. And when you watch a fucking McDonald's advert as a kid and it's selling you the toys from the film that you just enjoyed going to watch, and then you want to have those toys, and then it says it's a happy meal, even though like trademark after the fucking happy meal thing it's like you have to kind of stop and go this is some soil and green shit there's a fucking slaughtered being in this sandwich that they're selling to children as if it's acceptable and like some people just see it, it's like this is just fucking cold murder and they're getting away with it because the majority still do it well do you do you okay no, okay this is gonna be i mean a long shot but do, okay the com the comparison of mcdonald's and something like a welfare animal system that Whole Foods has, where it's a, it's actually like a five, it's a rated system where the, at number five, the cows are raised on farms, in pastures, they have a long, healthy life until, and they are dead, right? And then we do that. Now, do you feel that yeah. even that is horrendous? Because I, I believe that the, that, that like you know you know you know factory raised animals that are put in those little boxes like the little chickens that are forced to lay eggs and that's horrific force fed all that stuff but don't you at least see that maybe the revolution cannot only be considered all right slaughtered animal in this burger but but in Whole Foods for example a this cow led a long, healthy life raised by farmers that took care of them. I actually have, if I may, um, I actually brought a sheet from work here um, okay. that actually shows that the, the, the whole five-step system, where step one is no crate, no cages. Um, step two, enriched environments. Step three, enhanced outdoor access. Step four, pastured centered and step five animal centered which prohibits all physical altercations as well as not um having gmos and all that type of stuff in the animals which whole foods doesn't even allow gmos in the first place uh but do you think that maybe a a step in the revolution that you're uh, that you're talking about which that's your name that's awesome that i just said that <laughs> but uh that 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 the that the first step, instead of just trying to yell at everyone, make them feel bad into being a vegan, that the first step is to open everyone's minds in the whole factory farm raised animals and try and stop that first. Because we all know this, when, when, um, when slavery was being abolished, it was one thing at a time. It's not like one day they were like, no more slaves, and then the all slaves just went home. No, it went like this state, this state, this state. Perhaps if we begin with talking about abolishing the, the horrendous, disgusting, 
like turning animals into machines pretty much that portion first treating them with respect then that way we can open up meat eaters minds into buying only animals that are treated with the five-step welfare system and uh, hopefully hopefully in the future and believe me I'm with you man I'm with you in banning and making a law against these disgusting factories that just that oh my god Sorsha made a video where the chickens were upside down and the machine and then some like and it slices off their heads one by one and then some chickens miss the blade and ah oh, like that stuff I agree we should definitely take steps into uh, making that illegal and stopping that. But I don't think that trying to change everyone's mind like that in an instant is going to work. Whereas if we talk about plant-based proteins and we talk about that, Adam, you know this, what I mean? Yeah. This, so it's, uh, sure. What you're saying is endemic to you because you are in a position where you haven't made that transition for yourself yet. So it's like it's like a fat person going like, oh, the best way to promote getting skinny is this because, and like, if you haven't got there yet, like you're not in a position to give out advice on how to change things. And the, what we call this debate within veganism is like welfare and abolition. And there are people who go, well, can we just tell people not to have fucking chickens in cages before we slice their necks open? Mm -hmm. And then there's other people going, yeah, let's keep them in barns, good lives, that's an improvement. And they can try and sway a market, so they go, they expose the cages and then people want the better lives. But to me, it's not about ending suffering, it's about a mental connection. And what you're currently saying is like, the equivalent to, for me to be allegorical again, in the terms of like, uh, there'd be three people standing watching the slave get whipped because he didn't pick enough cotton for that day by the guy, right? And someone just goes, oh, well, he deserves it. Black people should pick cotton. And then the other person goes, nah, they, they shouldn't whip the slave that hard. They should whip him a bit, but that's like, there's blood. That's okay, going okay, but, but and then when you're talking about slavery, it's different than in the animal kingdom. Dude, I, I, I tweeted lions. If lions were able to farm, had the brain capacity to farm zebras, they would, right? And then someone replied with, "Well, lions need meat. Um, I need meat to survive." But I mean, technically, you could have a vegetarian lion if they had that mindset. I personally think the the reason you brought up the example of lions then is because in your childhood, us being the same age. Uh, you fucking like you grew up and like part of your justification you're watching the mcdonald's adverts and then like the first person who explains fucking like the circle of life to you is mufasa and you're just like yeah we are <laughs> you're right <laughs> See, you're right it was lion king i love that movie <laughs> it's a fucking awesome movie they shouldn't have made the sequels they were shit but oh horrible horrible right <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing, like, so you've, like, you've listened to Mufasa and he's like, Disney has replaced your fucking father figure with your morals and they've just gone, well, this is our justification for doing this. And what you've forgotten while watching that cartoon is that film's about lions. It's not telling humans how to live their life. And when we talk about this circle of life and the antelope become the grass and like, that works when you're out in the fucking Sahara. But in reality, in the 21st century, you're probably someone who's never killed an animal and like you're probably not comfortable with the idea of like killing someone's pet for fun or whatever or like to fucking eat it. Definitely like, not, of course, yeah. And when we live in an abundance where you can actually be healthier on a vegan diet, like they're, they're just being like, well, lions do it is not a fucking like valid argument. And so like the third person in the slave thing would go, oh, instead of just not whipping the slave so hard, maybe we should let these humans have their fucking freedom out of just respect that they're like us. Okay. Yeah. And so yeah. what... Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. So here's the thing, it's like, um, first off, like, okay, so let's just address some... I'm going to be going off my memory on this one, uh, having watched your video twice. It's... Uh, okay, the first thing that you... Well, and some of the things that you've just said as well. The, the first thing that um, you said... Obviously, it's harder to get protein on a vegan diet. Um, so you respect vegan gains for the fact that he's teaching people, you know, like how to bodybuild, even though it's harder. And you, I remember you said the words, it's obviously harder to do it. And what you were saying was like, it's obvious to me because I haven't educated myself in it yet. So I'm just going on this assumption. What vegan gains is actually saying is like, most people have been taught a lie that protein comes from meat. 
when actually like do you you call it in America you call it like Legos instead of Lego you yeah. pluralize it Legos imagine like some kids got the latest fucking you're a kid and this kid's got the latest fucking Lego castle and there's another box on the floor of the same Lego castle and you walk into the room and you're like fuck man I really want to like have a Lego castle like that kid Legos for the fucking American listeners Legos we don't pluralize them okay okay that's a different <laughs> yeah why that's the thing but it's um. And so you go into the room and you see the box with the fucking Legos and you're like, that's not a castle. <laughs> that's just a box full of Lego bricks. And it's like, no, it's got the potential to be a castle. And you're like, I want that kid's castle. And then you smash up his castle and then you sit and rebuild it. And it's just like, why the fuck would you do that when like, you could have just done the exact same thing without having to smash up the kid's toy? And if you think about it, like, how the fuck do gorillas, cows, fucking all these herbivorous animals get their protein if they're not eating meat? Yeah, okay. Okay, you, okay. you know what, man? I, I have to say, may I say this just in the middle of this whole thing that you're saying? You, you, you're making a lot of points, a lot of valid points, and very well spoken, I must say. Uh, I, got, I got no rebuttal to that one. And that's a beautiful thing. I think that's why yeah. comedians are always people who can just go like, like when you watch Charlie Chaplin as an example of like a physical comedian, like, they show you when they like they're going to paint the fence and then they fucking drop the bucket and then the ladder falls over and then the boss turns up and that's why it's funny because they're showing their mistakes and I think like so many people aren't comedians because they're terrified of looking stupid in front of others and like it's always that thing like it's the fucking South Park sketch where it's like oh you know there's no stupid questions and then some kid goes five and it's like right let's not ask someone who's a complete retard everyone's scared of that fucking reaction and I think comedians just put out there their thoughts regardless of whether like people are going to go, oh, is he fucking crazy? Is he an idiot? Like, and you just joke about them. And it's a fucking form of therapy because it's like most people have those stupid thoughts and those doubtful thoughts, but they don't fucking express them. They just hold them in and go, am I crazy? I better not say anything. <laughs> like, I won't. Yeah. And you know, that, the, the, so that's the difference between people who can get up on a fucking stage and say some funny shit and people who pay to watch them and laugh at them, in my opinion. Yeah, so, yeah. So, well, that's why I was not afraid to make that video about Sorsha and... Again, yeah. I, I, again, man. I, 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 okay. Like with all the points that you're making right now, it's awesome. But however, in that video, yeah. it wasn't defending meat eaters or veganism. It was pretty much defending humanity. Do you know what I'm saying? Which video? Because, we well, my video. Because, because, oh, well, <laughs> well, Sorsha's video. Like, can you at least say that, like? The way she comes across, she not really likable. Not really likable. Do you know what I'm saying? Her hey, audience is vegans, man, and she's very aware of that. I had her on the podcast like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. I saw that she had tweeted that, yeah. And, well, uh, well and then, honestly, man, I have to say this as well. I don't hate her. I, I, there, there is no part to all my uh, viewers who are like, oh, she's a bitch and this and that. I, d I didn't feel that. That's why I wanted to actually make that video so she could respond yeah. to me and have a dialogue like, like me and you were having. Yeah. And maybe, because yeah. like you said, I, I'm, I'm a circle jerk away from being a vegan, right? Because I do a lot of things that aren't, I don't have dairy. I hate dairy. And meat is very, very, whenever it's just around, I don't seek it because I have my, my supplements and I eat a lot of carbs, you know, rice and uh, salad quinoa is my favorite thing you're in shape, right you're in good shape you said you kind of like you're lean you've got some tonage on you you're like you're happy with your physique well i used to i used to honestly my eyes three years ago i weighed 110 pounds very okay. light and i was like pretty much anorexic man like not that i was anorexic but i would forget to eat that's what it was, Dude, and I was you're a filmmaker like you basically do an 18 hour day shoot and you're like Oh, I think I'm like, you know, this is going somewhere. And then you f fall asleep and you start again the next day. And at some point you oh, eat some fucking biscuit. Yeah, man. When I, I used to cool. smoke too, it was like yeah. I would light a cigarette off the cigarette that was finishing. And then wow, smoke cool. that, smoke a pack, a pack, maybe two packs a day. And for five years, uh, I That's smoked two I'm sorry? That's why they call it chain smoking. Because yeah, the it, it's, it's the chain, yeah. And... Oh, wow. I, I, now I look at smoke, and, and also in my video I, I did mention I don't look at a smoker and go, "Yo, fuck you, you're smoking. That's horrible." I look at them and be like, 
dude, I quit and it's the best thing I ever did in my life. And okay, maybe this is what you're telling me. Maybe this is like me telling the smoker to quit because smoking, honestly, I was, I, I went to the hospital because I stopped breathing and, and now I work out every single day. I try to, an hour, uh, heavy lifting. I do my protein supplements and eat a lot of fruit and veg after, uh, mainly juicing because veg takes so long to eat and it's boring. <laughs> uh, no. yeah. yeah, but, but, but my... I mean, say well done, like, a lot of people don't turn it around for themselves and they just end up like, just being like, oh, well, when I die, at least I won't have to live through this life anymore. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and believe me, man, three months after I quit smoking, that, it was like... I would just grab like a bo a water bottle and just like squeeze it for no reason. I would like I was scratching my own face and like you want to just punch <laughs> someone and and I was seeing a girl at the time and I was just snapping on her just like shut up you know what I mean and then, and then finally yeah. one day it was just like I woke up saw someone smoking the the smoke wafted in my face and I almost yacked and then also with the meat products. Uh, a friend of mine's father also had a heart attack because he ate a lot of you know pork and all that stuff. That's what scared me, and I started feeling like heart palpitations, primarily from smoking and from meat and alcohol. So I yeah. sort of, to I was like, okay, steak, rare. I, I mean, rare, not like a rare steak, but like rarely, like Blue Moon. Um, like yeah. I, I don't even, I don't remember the last time I had a steak. To be honest with you. Um, let me just, um, this is a good point for me to just interject and mm -hmm. say, like, um, one of the things you were asking for vegan gains to do more was to, like, just kind of, like, be in a happy way, not, not in a happy way, but, like, just to explain the science straight up, like, oh, if you understand this, it will help you too. So let me be that person to you in terms of, like, the reason you're seeing people get ill and, like, like, and they're, if they're in their fucking 50s or 60s or whatever, an age where you should still be able to, like, there's people that age who are running marathons, do you know what I mean? Like, so there's a divide in lifestyles. And like, it's not just the fucking smoking. One of the bit, like, smoking's not as bad for you uh, at all compared to um, what happens is, is like I was talking about the proteins. Animals eat these uh, things that have the components to build proteins uh, in them. And what happens is, is, like, as soon as it goes into your digestive system, it goes through walls. Like, it gets processed down to smaller parts. It goes through walls and enters into the bloodstream, right? And then the blood will deliver it to the different parts of the body that need it. And then it'll actually construct the cholesterol where it needs it. Okay. Um, and what happens is, is when you eat something with preformed cholesterol from an animal, and remember at this point, like some people disagree with this, they're usually religious people, you're an animal as well. So that like you have the same ability as a cow, not necessarily with grass, but with other vegetables to take the components to build them into the cholesterol your body does need. But while they're traveling around the blood, they're just the components. They're the fucking Lego blocks that haven't stuck together yet, okay? Uh -huh. But they will later on. So what's happening is, is people are eating these animals with preformed cholesterol. And the body's amazing because we are sort of like, we're om we are omnivorous, but we're optimally herbivorous uh, creatures. Um, but what happens is our body has to um, do like a fucking formula, like a fucking lab thing in the fucking gut to break those, the, the cholesterol that's already been formed back down to the bits to then put in the blood. And some of it goes into the blood as fully formed cholesterol. And because it's like the wrong shape to fit with anything, and it has to sort of like go around the system and get broken down again, it starts to create blockages just like it would with plumbing or whatever. And what you see is these people who are like, even if they're like very healthy, they do weights, they do a lot of cardio, they're still creating like this small valve in their heart. It's eventually going to create so much pressure that it's going to turn into a stroke. It's going to turn into a heart attack. And it's going to be a fucking like a wake up call at some point where they just go, I've got to the point where my body doesn't function anymore at an age pro way before like I'm meant to like sort of be freaking out about this stuff. And then they fucking have a heart attack and they just go, oh shit, my heart just stopped working. Because finally it's just blocked. The thing's been pushed through a bit and it's all this cholesterol that's built up like, like you'd have on the side of a dam or something. Well, so, yeah, but actually my dad, uh, he had s a seven bypass surgery. That's wow. seven of his, like they were going to do the operation for four. And then that day we made it to the hospital. It, they're like, you know what? There's a fifth vein we're going to mess around with. And then, uh, sorry, one sec. Uh, and, and then, then um, 
And then they they said, oh wait, like before while they were wheeling him out, you know, there's a sex uh, a sixth vein that's clogged, one of the smaller veins. We're gonna yes. do that as well. And then during the operation, about maybe four hours in, and obviously you're panicking when you're in the waiting room, uh, they came out and said, "Hey, we need you to." T- but assign this form, we're doing a seventh vein. Which, so pretty much what you're saying is throughout his life, eating meat, eating shitty and horrible, which he, he did, um, not just meat, like, like, you know, syrup on waffles with like bacon and ice cream right after and blah, blah, blah. All that, all that cholesterol one day just went, like was just building and building until all the blood just stopped. And actually, I, uh, half of his heart, the back part of his heart, was dead when they had opened it. Meaning, his heart, half of it, was already gone by the time they well, went yeah, in there. Like, to tell this story fully, like, um, can you remember, like, how did your, who told you that your dad was going to have this surgery? Like, how did they first break that news to you? Okay, actually, can I tell you a funny story? Uh, oh, it's not. It's not funny. It's not hilarious. Let's just say that. Yeah, but, but, well, <laughs> well uh, the day. Okay, so it was January sixth uh, yeah. of twenty. Uh, so uh, fourteen. Yeah, twenty fourteen. And uh, my dad, by the way, he was pretty bad at eating horribly. And and as much as you know, I defend meat eaters. I do see the potential dangers in it. Okay. And the way he was eating at midnight, he would eat a steak and a chicken and this. And I'm like, what are you doing? And then January 6th, he fried up an entire package of bacon and put it on a plate. It was midnight. And I yelled at him and I'm like, Dad, fine. You know what? You don't want to listen to me? Then come back to me when you have a heart attack. Yeah. And then January 7th, I get a phone call. Wow. Dad just had a heart attack. And I was, to be honest with you, man, my first feeling was emptiness. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was pure emptiness primarily because near his, the time of the heart attack, he lost energy. You could tell something was wrong for months, for like <laughs> six months. <laughs> You started this story off by going, this is a funny story. Yeah, like- well, okay, well, well, the funny story is, is I kept every day, Dad, uh, come for a run with me. Dad, let's do this. Dad, like, please, 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 please. I, I was already on my, my kick of working out, and I had reached 135 to 140 pounds. I'm 165 right now, heading for 185. That's my goal. And so I was already on this kick of health and all this stuff, and then... It's just funny the fact that he's like, no, no, no. And he's like, yeah, don't worry, don't worry, don't. And then I'm like, fine, come back to me when you have a heart attack. And then when I went to the hospital, he's like, well, here, here I am, man. You got me. <laughs> That's yeah. the funny part. It was like, he's like, you called it. And obviously I was like, come back to me when you have a heart attack. Wasn't out of like, I hope you have a heart attack. It was like, look, this is going to happen to you if you don't stop what you're doing he, like a, a whole a whole package of bacon an entire package on the plate and he was actually at you know the uh, have you ever heard of the restaurant a uh, swiss chalet perchance i haven't no I haven't. it's like a it, it sells like you know ribs chicken it's like their main uh, core it's like a uh, it's in between fast food and a restaurant it's that type of place okay. like, like an applebee's it and, sounds like they say give people heart attacks yeah, it's not the healthiest thing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, fries. And it actually, he had a heart attack. He, he felt sick mid-meal. Uh, uh, and then they, my mom drove him to the hospital. And there was such a long lineup that my dad went, you know what, let's not go. I don't feel like doing this right now. And then yeah. my mom's like, if you leave, I'm phoning the ambulance. And then when they did his blood pressure and did a bunch of tests, they could go, you just had a heart attack, and you also had one yesterday. We're going to bring you to the emergency right now. My dad's like, what the hell? Sat on the thing, and then the rest is history. And yeah. now he walks you know, miles every day, eats mainly salads and all that. Um, uh, he stopped smoking cigarettes. 
uh, stopped drinking, and so now he's super healthy. However, he does have chicken in his diet with his soup every now and then. But again, you know, old mentality, you can't ever change that, right? Uh, I mean... Let me, just, let me just connect this to something you said earlier. It's like you said from following Furious Pete with his whole thing and then going through cancer and stuff mm -hmm. to see vegan gains as like this kind of arsehole, uh, asshole, however you want to say, on the, um, just to be like, oh, this is why you got cancer. Like, you know, you fucking deserve to get cancer. Like when you see it as like this fucking arrogant kid on the internet who's just saying the dumbest shit to be offensive or whatever. I see a kid who's so fucking connected to Furious Pete that he feels the same way about him as you did your dad. And when he says that, it comes from a place of frustration because he wants to help him, but he doesn't know how yet. God, God damn it, vegan revolutions. <laughs> that is well said. <laughs> That's how that watch. is well yeah. said, bro. That's how you've got to watch vegan games because he's... he's um, he comes from the, work, the fitness industry world and there's so many people who don't know fuck all about nutrition, who take steroids, and then they say whey powder, which actually causes heart attacks and other problems, where it's just basically powders that they fucking get off the market. There'll be a group of them in their fucking house, like all their mates there, just tipping in the chemicals in different ratios into these buckets, selling them for like $60 on the internet, and then they've got the YouTube channel like, hey, I'm Furious Pete, and I sold out, and I'm probably going to give you cancer as well, but I'm going to pretend that I'm the fucking victim of this. Okay, what's your um, uh, ideas on this uh, plant-based protein that I'm taking, uh, Vega? I'm not sure if you know about it, but... It's, it's fine because it's plant-based. It's got no cholesterol. But the point is, it's like you're still being duped. Like Whole Foods, just because it's like quite vegan-based in terms of like health food, Whole Foods is full of more sh like fucking lies than a McDonald's in some sense because they're like try this new Manuka honey for like twenty dollars or whatever like it's ten plus and it's like you know and like it's all these fucking words on it and like what does a ten plus mean? It means fuck all, man. Like it, what does Manuka mean? Manuka is a fucking New Zealand word for honey. So all they've written on that label is honey, honey for people. It's the same sort of people who fall for that who get Japanese tattoos where they don't even know what the fucking symbol means. Those are the people yeah. who are getting duped to Whole Foods. And you fucking work in one, man. And there's some flaky-ass people who go into those. Some people know what they're doing. And it's all people with too much money, uh, as kind of an ethical conscience, but not a lot of logic behind them, buying shit that they're just worried, like, oh, maybe this will stop me from having cancer. But, but <clears throat> besides the fact... Okay, besides that fact of, okay, some products may be, you know, bullshit overpriced, you know, the whole joke is Whole Foods, Whole Paycheck, because everything's overpriced. Yeah, exactly. But, 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 don't, but don't you uh, at least see the value of, of the message they're trying to, to come across? Because well, I, I honestly, when I started working there, was about the time I started eating healthy, to be honest with you. I used to work at McDonald's, man. When I was 19, I ate McDonald's every day for a year. <laughs> just explain to you how creepy that is to me as someone who's like i grew up with the dairy thing but like my parents were vegetarian i didn't eat eggs as well but like i can kind of feel like how i was lied to by the milk industry because it was like need calcium for your, your bones the only place to get calcium is milk and it's like well actually calcium's in leafy greens and the reason cows have a lot of it is because they're eating the grass and we can eat fucking it's in broccoli and i'd never associated i'd always thought of calcium as like white and like i needed it from another species um and i never stopped and thought like hang on, like, I'm designed to stop drinking milk from my fucking mum's breasts at a certain age. And then after that, I lose the enzymes to like, have that. And then why would I need to drink it from another species and be dependent on that just on a fucking common sense level? So there's all of that. This, um, where was I going with that? It's like, you, yeah, so McDonald's, like, to me, McDonald's is incredibly creepy because it's literally just a restaurant that sold cheap fucking dead cow sandwiches. And the, the guy behind it went, it, this is back in the 1950s where it was like, uh, bring your wife to the restaurant, you know, the, the restaurant your wife will love. That's how they advertised all the restaurants back then. And McDonald's had a guy called Ray Kroc who basically bought the company off the McDonald's brothers. And he, came, he was a fucking like a genius psychopath in my opinion. Like, I've got a lot of respect for the guy, but he didn't care much for other humans. He was all about the profit margin. Yeah. yeah. And um, his whole thing was like, everyone's advertising their restaurants wrong. It's not... 
your man should bring you to this restaurant if you know like that's what a loving couple does he was like we'll get the whole family if we advertise it to the kids so mcdonald's became successful because they were the first ones who's like hey kids we're giving away free toys bring your parents along and they can pay for your meal and like bring the whole family along your grandpa too and so suddenly they became really successful and they did it as a, and the way they attracted kids first of all was a fucking clown they literally sat in a board meeting when what are kids like you know like clowns What's our business called? The McDonald's Brothers? Oh, let's call the clown Ronald McDonald. <laughs> and then the kids were like, oh, we like clowns. And the whole point of a clown to me, a clown is like an icon of a comedian. So a comedian gets on stage, like I was saying with Charlie Chaplin, does silly things, and everyone goes, ah, oh, there's a the clown. And the clown is the symbol of like, when, when you sit in theatre, those two masks, you see despair and fucking joy, like the two masks connected. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. It's- like, the clown was always meant to represent the happy side to me. And what happened is the generation grew up eating dead cows, being raised to believe that it was okay to humanely slaughter other living beings, even though it would make them ill, while staring at fucking Ronald McDonald waving at them. And that's why we have fucking, like, Stephen King's, like, it now. Like, people are terrified of clowns because mentally they've made a connection where they've just gone, maybe the clowns are fucking lying to me. Maybe, like, someone's been using the icon of a clown to fucking just make me sick and fucking use me and make profit out of killing, like, innocent fucking animals. Okay, yeah, well, you know what? I, I again, with the, uh, that that's a great, I, I never knew that. Holy shit, that's that's an awesome way to explain it. I, I, here's how... I knew McDonald's was not great good <laughs> at all. Yeah. Was I remember? Okay, so I was I was about eighteen when I started there, and I worked there for a year straight. And to be honest with you, like health, fitness was not even on my brain at all. And also, uh, uh, you know, f- like uh, what I put in my body. It I drank strictly pop when I was a kid. Uh, my parents didn't know a lot about nutrition, obviously, and I smoked cigarettes and yeah. all this stuff, right? So I, I, I remember uh, the one day, okay, it was about a bit, maybe I was eating it almost daily, daily for maybe about 10 months straight. And I remember one day in my like mind, my brain, I had that inkling, this is not right. This is, there's something wrong. Where was your dad at with his health at that point? I'm sorry? Where was your dad at with his health at that point? Did it like come up that he was like sort of in a bad way with it? Or? Actually, at that point, so, so I'm 27 now. So that was when I was 19, 18, 19, eight years ago. To be honest with you, me and my dad, we, me and him have actually hung out the past week every single day at night. I love my dad. He's the best. Like, yeah. like we, we connect on a level that we never have. I was not close to him at all. I didn't know too much about him. I actually, in fact, he would always be just chilling with his friends at the bar. And I was mad at that as well. And I was, you know, teenager, rebellious, you know, experimenting with weed and like girls and all that. And I was, I don't want to talk to my parents. He doesn't want to talk to me. So health wise, I, I never saw it until when I started working out at about 24, which is when most people get out of that teen evolving portion and go, you know what? My family is actually okay. Um, so, mm-hmm. so health wise, I did know that though he drank like a motherfucker. And I hated that. I always hated the drinking. I, I, I I'm not big on drinking. I drink, you know, when I had to a party once in a while, blah, blah, blah. But besides that, I'm not a big drinker. I prefer to smoke weed. <laughs> That's, uh, what did your dad do for a living or did for a living? Uh, okay. Uh, he, at that point, was working at, what did he do? Because uh, he, he, he was a, in insurance. And then he was the owner of a furniture store. Or worked for a furniture store with a partner or something. So he was working he, in furniture, yeah. Did he enjoy it? No. I, I, he likes being a salesman. But I, I, I think deep down, he, he's a salesman. That's his thing. He loves it. Uh, but he did get, I'll, uh, I'll say, very distracted. Like, you know what I mean? Meaning, like, he wasn't focused on work. It was mainly work to live, to have fun. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so... Enjoy the work as well. It's like, like... I mean, that's interesting because, like, um, 
you've gone into like the filmmaking thing where that's always like, oh, this is the entertainment industry. So this is like doing a job where it's also fun at the same time. And I think there's a certain illusion with that where like you do it for a few years and you go, actually, this is kind of fucking flaky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I think all filmmakers have to go through that stage. And it's, um, well, well it, it was really funny too because um, uh, when I, at that point, had been doing YouTube for a bit and it was going well, I, I think I made my first movie, Dark Fist, was in, I was 23, so it was only a few years after that, because after McDonald's, I actually went to college for journalism, mainly to hang out with friends, because my friends moved to uh, Niagara Falls, I'm sure you've heard of Niagara Falls, um, yeah. like a city called St. Catharines, so mm -hmm. I, I had gone there to be a writer. Cause I'm like, oh, journalism, writing, and I end up dropping out because, because you, as you know, journalism is not creative at all. It's mainly like let's reiterate a story. So, so yeah, man, it was just fucking boxing the form. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, but just the McDonald's thing. Just to end it was, I remember thinking in my head, this there's something really wrong with how I feel right now, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna eat today. I'm not gonna eat the McDonald's, right? And then I remember actually like being there and my manager being like, hey, you can have these ju uh, junior chickens, you can just eat them. And I remember trying to resist and I started sweating and shaking. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm oh. like, I feel like I'm on drugs right now. Like, I feel like I'm a heroin addict who, yeah. who kind of can't find his heroin and it's right in front of him and he knows it's wrong and and when I had quit, when I went to St. Catharines to uh, Niagara Falls to do school, all the food that we ate, honestly, I can't even remember. I can't, I used to eat macaroni out of the pot, you know, like I didn't know what was going on with my body or my life, like at all. Like I had, I was, I matured very late. I'll tell you right now, if you go, go through my old videos, man, which I don't recommend because I used to suck horribly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you see my, my, my evolution of Andy Worski, you could tell my old videos. You, you see how I'm trying to be on some videos shocking and offensive and da-da-da. But I try yeah. and have a point where back then it was like, let's make a rape joke with no point. You know what yeah. I mean? It was sort of like just learning how to be offensive. And then when I learned about Louis C.K. and I could start talking about you know, my childhood and the traumas that I've ha that have happened when I was a kid, which have been a few things uh, when I was a child, um, that I make jokes out of, that people go, hey, how, how is that funny? How is, how is being abused by your babysitter funny? Like, I've, uh, uh, and, I'll, and then I say the joke and people go, okay, it's funny, that's horrible, but it's funny. So I yeah. try and have a point with everything I say now, um, but McDonald's, man, I remember that I it was like crack, it was crack. The the sh like whatever yeah. was in there, and I remember one guy. We were having a meeting, uh, a store meeting type thing, and we were yeah. tasting the new products that were gonna come in. And one guy was like, "Well, you know, uh, when we are eating this junk food," and then the manager went, "Junk food? This is not junk food." I remember even my brain then, as an immature person, was like, it's junk food, dude. Don't, <laughs> don't, just because you eat one Big Mac a day doesn't make it not, he's like, I eat one Big Mac every single day. It's not junk food, and look at me. And he wasn't fat or anything. Obviously, his heart was, I actually saw him pretty recent, and I'm like, ah, he's getting fat. <laughs> but, um. This is the thing, and that's the, that's the frustration of the vegan messages. Uh, it's very hard to tell people that what they're doing is wrong while they're still a part of it because people always want to live in that world where they go, it's not junk food, and they go, it's, it's okay to kill animals this way. Like, as, as long as you're sort of part of it, it's very hard to disconnect and see it for what it is. I, I, I actually have a story for you that is very reminiscent of, I was watching uh, Vegan Gains the other day, and remember, when I watch them, it's a love-hate thing. 
You know what I mean? It's sort of like a... Uh, I wish you could tone it down. I do see your point with like the frustration of how he feels and trying to like yell the message and get the message across. But he's genuinely angry. He's like, yeah, but yeah. I, I was okay. My grandpa back in Portugal, like I said, they had a farm. I went yeah. there for one summer for two months, and he had I think it was four cows. And every day I was a kid. I was probably like eleven, maybe ten. And I every day. I'd run out into the pastures, and I would uh, look over at the cows. I named all of them. I was so super happy. And then it came to the point where when I would lean over the rock fence, they would walk up to me, and they weren't scared. And one cow actually let me touch its face. And I was like, oh, and I, I loved them. I loved them. They were great. And yeah. dude, this is, I'm not even, this is not an over-exaggeration story. This story sticks in my mind like a fucking, yeah. Man. <laughs> I woke up one day yeah. and I go into the, ki uh, the kitchen that is, uh, shares a wall with the garage because they remodeled it. And there was like a window that went from the kitchen into the garage, strange structure, but it was a farm. Okay. And I look in the window and I see hanging from the top of the garage, every cow skinned, cut yeah. in half, like chopped in half. And man, that did fuck with me. Like, I'm going to tell you right now, like that, I remember, and then I remember my grandma uh, chopped them up, sold half of them. And then we ate, well, they were going to eat for dinner, uh, the cows that were just, that were my friends for the whole summer. And I refused, and I cried, and I'm like, you don't get it. Because this story is just coming up right now in my brain. Like, I remember it now, like, now that, now that we're talking. And I'm like, you don't get it. They knew me. Like, they knew me. And my gr uh, grandpa and grandma, obviously, they've Portugal, stuck in the ways, farming their whole life. They were like, like, like don't worry. It's okay. They were alive for us to eat. They're here for us to eat. But me not accepting it, and I, I could, I did connect to those cows that to the fact that I could not have eaten them. Now maybe the disconnect throughout my entire life. And remember, Ben, like I said, I was so immature, you know, stoner, didn't give a fuck, fuck, yeah. fuck, fuck authority. Um, yeah, rebel. You know, just all that stuff that the disconnect of animals really became evident that I didn't care. I ate McDonald's every day, right? And then when I was, you know, 23, 24 and watched that movie, uh, Food Inc., yeah. that's what really reminded me of that cow story. Yeah. And I told it to my girlfriend at the time. And it really did, uh, saying it now upsets me. And like, uh, like, uh, like, I see what you're saying. It's the kid who doesn't believe in Santa Claus, but sort of thinks he's still there, though. He who's bringing these presents, like that. I want to believe that the. I think it's like almost the guilt of always eating animals my entire life. It's like, well, if I stop now, I already ate hundreds, thousands of animals. I sit on furniture that's wooden chairs that cut down trees of birds. I already do things to the environment. I, I try my best to be as whole as possible, but like meaning whole as in like, like, um, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Like I, 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 I don't want animals being hurt. I try and be as like, like when someone's like, oh, fuck animals. Like I, that pisses me off. Cause yeah. I'm I'm on like both sides. I'm on the fence. I'm I'm on the fence with both legs on either side, and I understand your point completely. And I think the only fear in my life, man, is if I become a vegan, the troubles that I had to gain weight, which was horrific. Just ugh, like the amount of food I had to eat and like things I had to do. You know cashews every day and like you know fatty like avocados in my smoothie you know like if i start eating salad and i start eating this and that my metabolism is so fast that i feel like i'll be skinny 
and my entire life was based upon defending myself on how skinny I was and being unattractive and girls not liking me. Like, like, I used to be an ugly motherfucker, and now I feel like I'm not, and I'm confident. I get chicks often enough whenever I feel like I can, and I feel like if I were to become a vegan, it's like, now I'm risking the fact that what if I'm at a friend's house who's having a barbecue? He's got burgers. I'm a vegan. I don't want to eat those burgers, so now I lose weight. So now I'm skinny. Now I'm back to old Andy. It's just like thought process that just like it eats away at me and that's the reason why I watch vegan games. How does a meat eater watch vegan games and not hate him? Because of this mentality. That's why I made the vid a video for Sorsha yeah. was to open up this discussion and I'm so happy I'm talking to you because you're making me think bro. Like I fucking, I wrote all these questions for you and a lot of them seem like stupid. Well hang on, hang on, just before we go off that topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just told this fucking cow story and it's like this thing that like you just fucking suppress the shit out of because you're the people you trust as authority figures at that time when this is normal and rather than listening to how you felt in that moment where you just went like those cows had fucking personalities and like you've done like this has happened to them like this is wrong they've just got no this is normal and you go okay this is normal then and then like you've had to suppress the shit out of how you, you your immediate reaction without any influence was and um and like, so once, once you suppress it, it's not just like, oh, I bet all that meat. It's just that fucking, it's, what, like, it's a form of denial called cognitive dissonance where you go, if I've turned out to be wrong for what I've done, that means I have to accept a lot of wrong that I did. So yeah. therefore, yeah. It, the new information that contradicts what I've always believed must be wrong instead without actually logically going through on a sort of logical level, like, do we need to eat animals? Did I feel it was cruel as a child? It's all these things. And then, so when uh, Sosha, uh, Sosha rhymes with Porsche, it's, um, <laughs> I need to do that every time, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I said her name, I'm like, I hope I'm saying your name right, by the way. <laughs> that was the moment where I was like, oh, it's just me who has a problem with that name. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, is it a complicated name? And it's like, nah, it's just me. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, what, the reason she compared it to racism is because like, as much as you're like, fuck racism, racism's bad, and like you've been brought up with that cultural narrative that racism is a bad thing, mm -hmm. um, but then the people that you look up to, like these fucking parents, these Portuguese parents, like they fucking raise you, they're like heroes to you, like on some levels of kids, you know, uh, they just go, it's normal to eat meat, and then you've gone, well, that's another level of a fucking obstacle where you go, well, not only is it wrong of me to have done all those things I did, but it's also wrong of my parents. And that's really fucking heavy, man, to just, it's a big block for people. Yeah. And, um, and when Sasha says, like, it's like racism, like, what you have to imagine is you, you take your cow story, your fucking story about the cows, and you just go, oh, I had black people who looked after me and nannied me as a kid. And like, we, my parents didn't pay them, but the black people were there for us to sort of, like, you know, have as, like, companions who like you know we looked after them and I've never seen a black person in the wild who's free so like this is what black people are there for and then suddenly one day like one of the black people who fucking raised you as a kid and you spent a bit of time with and they seem like this happy black is suddenly hanging off a tree like they fucking lynched him because he did something wrong like uh you know something fucking happened and then you just see it and then you go to parents you go like why is that guy who, you know like he seemed like a nice guy like why is why is he like that and then they just go Oh, black people are here for us, and it's just what happens. Jesus you know? Christ. And that's basically like when you start to realize like that a cow has, whether you want to call it a soul or electrical energy or whatever you want to call it, and like if you've done shrooms, like to me it's like shrooms is like neither religion nor atheism. It's like there's a third option and shrooms sort of evokes it a little bit. But it's like um like you know as a kid that those cows have fucking personalities and they've got perspectives of the fucking universe just the same as you have and like it isn't all about you and you having your story like there's multiple stories going on each person's got a perspective on it and through this narrative just like slavery you've had the same thing where you've been raised like just like a child raised on a cotton plantation who's seen some lynched fucking <laughs> oh we we do lynch negroes that's what we do around here and you go okay that's what we do like okay my parents can't be bad people to have killed the negroes like okay it's like, it's, it's this fucking, and to me it's like a curse, it's like fucking voodoo, like, if a child eats meat, 
to then stop eating meat, they have to get out of a double bind in their head where they go, this is wrong, and that also means I was wrong. It's like a fucking escape clause that just stops them from like thinking it through fully because it's uncomfortable. And like when you talk about like these degrees of like Whole Foods thing, that is like the biggest bullshit that I've ever heard in terms not because you're saying it, but from Whole Foods. Um, is because they're saying, uh, you know, like, do you want your slaves whipped or do you want your slaves free range? But by free range, we still don't pay them. Do you know what I mean? Like these chickens, like they call it free range, but they still, that just means they're not in cages. They keep them in a fucking warehouse. And even if they do keep them outside, they go to the same fucking slaughterhouse, regardless of whatever type they were going through. And they end up in that fucking factory where their throats are getting slit. Uh, Sasha showed you. Sasha. <laughs> um, <laughs> What you've got to kind of realize is that, like, like just just do this for me for a moment, man. Just, like, yeah. you've heard the term humane slaughter. Mm -hmm. Yes. How, how do you justify those two words being connected to each other? Uh, <laughs> uh, wow. Dude, I'm blown away. I'm, I'm actually blown away. Fuck. I thought this sheet I had written here was good, but oh my god. You're ready, man, yeah. Oh my god, dude. No, seriously, man, seriously. Oh. <laughs> like, the, okay, what, what you're experiencing right now is my brain trying to understand emotions. <laughs> no, it's more than that. Like, what's, like, this is on a fucking magical level where it's like, we're using words over the fucking internet to have a conversation where I'm basically, you seem like you're ready. I think like the reason you, the reason I do meet out of a day is I always get in contact with them afterwards. And I always find people who are, the reason they're angry is because they're right on the verge of realizing this fucking like denial that they've gone through. And so far I've only done this five days now. I've turned like two people vegan off the back of it, not including yourself yet. Cause you're just, uh, but what's happening is like I'm talking like fucking black magic, fucking voodoo. Like you eat the corpse of an animal and it fucking not only makes you unhealthy, but it makes you more selfish and it makes you not be able to use all of your brain because you're always like you've got this fucking thing in a closet. It's the, oh, but my parents are good people and those cows like, oh, like maybe it is OK to humane slaughter is a real thing. You know, it's all of that. And the people who market this food at fucking Whole Foods go, Greek yogurt is really good for you. And then that's, that just leads me on to the next point. Like, there, there was, like, I fucking hate the vegan who told you, like, oh, yeah, they do rate the animals because some people fuck chickens. Like, I get that, that was part of your comedy thing, like, the cum in the chicken. That was very, I like, that painted a picture, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that line. It was, it was a great line. <laughs> in the cum of someone who raped this chicken in the middle. And it's, um, but what you've got to realize is, like, why is it weird to eat someone else's cum in the chicken rather than just the corpse of a chicken it, by itself like it's a fucking dead body man okay okay well, well first of all just uh just imagining coming the chicken when i open <laughs> it it's just whole, making me uncomfortable <laughs> it, but it's not the, just the cum in the chicken it's the cum of a rapist who fucks animals <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's, but anyway like um it's probably hiv positive now i'm getting too far with it. it's a uh, but it's um here's what i wanted to say is like the person at your work who said rape is like that's that's why this girl in the video said rape you've gone why has this girl said rape in this video and she's gone oh well, sometimes they fuck the chickens that's the dumbest fucking playground fucking like oh i heard this once and you've gone oh okay <laughs> what, well, well, well well to be fair yeah. though she is a vegan fully she's an uned like just because well, well, I, I showed her i showed her sorsha's video at work yeah and uh she she was like Cause she's told me benefits and blah 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 and all that stuff and and it was all not as good as what you're doing right now and fucking with my mind but uh yeah mind blown mind equals blown but um uh she sorry i'm i'm still processing things yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she she uh watched the video and she did agree with sorsha's attitude has the attitude of someone you don't want to listen to. That's what I meant. Whereas if she went like, look, okay, I understand. And by the way, like I said before, I like, I like her as a person. I watched her other videos. She seems very nice. Um, it was just sort of like, again, the, the insinuation that 
you like dairy, therefore you condone rape. You yeah. love murder. Mm. You, I, and then she went, I won't even, I don't fuck with you. I don't talk to you. I won't, and she doesn't even reply to me, even though I messaged her a million fucking times nicely. Did, yeah, listen to this. Like, like, we should do like a three way podcast with Sasha and maybe like lay it down the line. But it's, um, uh, uh, maybe, yeah, I'm down. I'd be down for that. I'll, I'll chat with her. It's, uh, it's, she was just like kind of. Well, okay, first of all, I want to ask you this question. Like, how do you think milk is made? Like, cow's dairy. How do I think it's made? Okay, let's see. What's the uh, current process that you understand how it's made? Like, what's, what needs to happen to get that milk to oh, fuck humans? <laughs> I know you're going to pwn me here, but I will continue oh. and say my thought. I, uh, I, I, I thought there was a special breed of cows called dairy cows, and they always produce milk. Is that what you currently think? Well, no, I, I imagined it as a bunch of cows, it's a bunch of them, in a farm that's on like, you know, separate, you know, uh, what do you call it, separate, uh, 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 dividers, that's it, dividers, and then they put the machine on it, and then they, it sucks the milk right out, that's, and then they go, all right, cows, let's go outside for a walk, and then when the cow is big and fat, and they kill the cow, and then they're like, here's some meat for everyone. That's how I imagine it. I know that's probably wrong, and I probably sound like an asshole by saying that. Um, so I, I, I will let you speak. <laughs> I've got some videos to send you, man. Like some that I've made. Like I come from a filmmaker background, and the thing that fucked me off for a while is I saw all these feminists, like these fucking feminist social justice warriors on Twitter. Yeah. And like you know, like uh, just going rape's bad, and everyone being like, yeah, she's so right, rape's bad. Yeah, I agree with her, and it's like, oh, we all agree like rape is bad and we all think it together and we're good people and anyone who does and it's like who the fuck cares like everyone knows rape's bad yeah, like what the yeah. fucking point in the message and then all these people aren't fucking vegan and then so I made a film that was like a 1950s chauvinistic film where it's like fairer sex the women drinking milk you know it's like really like to fuck with feminists on that level <laughs> where it's like, like 1950s like here's a woman who's learned how to use a typewriter and she's thinking about you know like it's kind of like that and um, all kind of black and white and stuff. And then it starts to talk about how dairy works. And it was playing with the idea that, like, if you don't agree with rape and you're a feminist and, yeah, yeah um, you know, it's her body, whatever, and all this shit. And then you fucking, like, you drink milk. You've, you've misunderstood how milk is made. And this is, like, I didn't grow up eating meat. So, like, the milk thing is, like, big with me where I feel embarrassed that I used to... But like, uh, there's always a shame with veganism, and that's where some of the anger comes from. In like Sasha, so, Sasha, Sasha, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every, every time, every time. <laughs> it's a uh, Sasha. It's a uh, like that sarcasm comes from like a slight. Like she's a fucking comedian. What you need to understand is that's her personality, uh, based on her videos where she does like this fucking sarcastic shit. Almost and like basically me doing. You know, dumbest Snapchats ever, taking people's, you know, pictures and then bashing the hell out of what they say or do. And so, uh, Sasha could be a, a stand up comedian, in my opinion, because she's got this. She's funny. Oh, yeah, totally. I, I totally see it. It just, it just hit that nerve, you know? Ugh. That's the thing, like, that's a good comedian. Like, they fuck. When I remember watching George Carlin, like, uh, for the first time on YouTube, stoned with some mates, and he just, like, we were all laughing, like, this guy's fucking hilarious, and he's like, oh, banning words, he's fucking, like, you know, these fucking people, and then he just went, and now they've banned the word cripple, and, like, all my mates just stoned, and suddenly it was that awkward moment in the room where we were like, but cripple is a bad word. <laughs> <laughs> and he made us fucking think about it, and, like, he went on to say, like, you know, does calling it disabled or physically challenged make the person any less crippled than they were when you called them crippled? Like, it's a word for the thing, and all you're doing is dressing it up by avoiding the issue. And we're like, we're all sitting there like, we've got our arms crossed at this point, and we're like, fuck, man, maybe he's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, hang on, didn't uh, Carlin have a bit about meat? Yeah, he was a vegetarian, man. He was, uh, he didn't oh. make it vegan. He was a hypocrite until he died. <laughs> <laughs> No, they're like, as much as I love George Carlin, you know, it's, um... I love, oh my God, he, yeah, he, I mean, religion, whatever, like, thing he talked about, you're just like, wow, this man, this man, yeah, I agree with that, definitely. 
observational truths where he just goes, have you ever noticed how you've never noticed this before? He was like the first guy to really tap into that, to that level. It's like, you've been fucked with and now you're realizing it. And not, like, and not being afraid of the backlash. Yeah, he just fucking was. And that's the thing, like, Vegan Games, man. I don't know if, how many Vegan Games videos you watch, but like, there's a guy who like got invited to like just fucking turn up to get beaten up at like some whey powder uh, expo. I, I, I actually, yeah, I, I saw that whole thing where Vegan Games had insulted Lex Fitness's girlfriend, called her anorexic or something. No, he, no, he didn't ever offend his girlfriend. What he said was like, Lex, you forced your girlfriend to compete in competitions where you forced her to starve herself and take steroids to the point that she looked like this and then he put the photo of her. And the guy, like, he obviously saw it. I reckon they're probably watching it in England. His girlfriend starts crying. He's like, fucking guy. And he's like, oh, I'll leave a comment, this fucking kid. Like, and, you know, and he's got his big following. So suddenly there's loads of likes on it. Vegan Games reading it. And he says, if you, t you know, like, maybe if you turn up to an expo, like, you know, like, we can have a word about this. And, like, you know, we might give yeah. you a bit of a cuddle or whatever. And it's like some sort of threat. Vegan Games just walked into fucking Mordor. Like, this, I saw, this, yeah, he did. He really did. <laughs> But like confidently, Vegan Games is like one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in my mind. He's fucking like, he's borderline sociopathic. And this is what I want to talk to him about tomorrow is, uh, is the fact that like, he's a fucking hero because he knows he's right and he doesn't give a fuck, man. Like, he doesn't give a fuck about the people who are wrong. He's just promoting the message and anyone who's ready to hear it, he's there for them. And that's a beautiful fucking thing, I think. Do you uh, look, okay, now here, here's sort of the question I have. Um, based upon uh, my reaction to Sorsha's video, I was, I will not say offended, but I was just annoyed at the way she sort of sounded snarky. Uh, do yeah, she's you- she's doing it to fuck with you, man, it worked. Like, that's why we're having- She did, oh, 100%. It really did fuck with me. And that's why I was, the only, the, the, the point of the video, again, at the end, when I said, like, Sorsha, I'm not saying I hate you, I, I, I'm not a hater. When she goes, oh, is it a hater? I'm not a, I wasn't a hater at all. I didn't, believe me, I've called people cunts, fucks, told them to die. I've, I've, I've threatened people. I, if you like have seen the history of my videos, it's pretty bad. It gets pretty dark. Um, my movie, Dark Fist, it's like a superhero comedy movie, has literally, there's a, um, my movie's online, and yep. uh, the movie's an hour and a half, I got a video called Every Swear Word in Dark Fist. It's 10 minutes long, okay? And it's just <laughs> snippet. You could, you could watch the whole movie in just swear words and know what happened. <laughs> so I understand that, but it sort of seems to me that, like, like, do you feel this? Do you feel like me who has eaten meat and who does? Um, I mean, we'll talk about my future in a bit, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> Who, who who does uh he do you hate me do you like you hate me like do you see me and do you go ugh andy worski meat eater gross hope he fucking dies like like sorsha had that vibe of like instead of trying to be helpful it was like uh you eat meat i'm better than you fuck you hope you die you know what i mean whereas I, I'm a very a big advocate, by the way, of happiness and motivation. And yeah. I go around, man, I swear to God, I do this. I go around and I motivate people to be happy. And when I see stress yeah. or depression, I do anything in my power to make people happy. I've had fan, I had one fan actually of mine uh, talk about like they were going to kill themselves. This was like a year ago and she was on the brink and I talked to her on the phone. I gave her my number and talked with her over and over um, until she became better about happy and motivation. And I'm a big advocate of happiness and motivation. And um, I feel as if the negative, depressive thought that Sorsha was get, uh, coming across wasn't one of something like yourself or happy, he healthy vegan. Like happy, healthy vegan I watch and he was the one who sort of like swayed me into trying some, most of my life uh, yeah. without dairy, without meat and all that and obviously yeah. variables on my life. It actually helped me where Sorsha 
came, like came across to the point of like, ugh, maybe I don't want to be a vegan. Will I become a like an asshole like that? Will I become a high and almighty like, oh, I'm better than you? Because that's not me. I'm one for, hey, like, are you sad right now? I will listen to your problems. I will give you advice. I'll give you a hug. I'll give you, dude, and believe me, man, I am so happy. Me and my ex-girlfriend, we just broke up two months ago. I ended our relationship because we were having, like, she was depressive and holding me back for what I want to be, which is an, an entertainer. And I was so depressed and sad that becoming the happy person that I am right now, that's why when I had all the, all the insults from all your fans, I was sort of like, come on, guys, stop being mean. Like, I want to be, like, cool. I want to be, like, uh, talk to me. Try and point me in the right direction if you think it is the right direction. Because all their thoughts, Sorsha uh, and all your fans who were bashing me, which wasn't too many, by the way. A lot of them were really nice, actually. Um, uh, it was swaying me away from, like, maybe I don't want to be part of this this club. It seems like a bunch of assholes. In fact, I had some friends at work when I was telling them I was going to debate you because I was very excited about it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I had a, a lot of friends from work being like, oh, why don't you buy a steak and eat it in front of him on webcam? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, and me being the nice person I am, I'm like, I would never do that. That's not a thing I would want to do. And also, again, I today, I haven't eaten any dairy or meat products today. I don't mm. very often. I know you were like meat tard. I am the last person who's a meat tard. I don't, I prefer other things. Uh, and yeah. fruit, uh, fruits and, and protein powders are my thing. I love that stuff. That's why I'm so lean and I don't have a belly at all. But um, uh, th th that's my point towards Sorsha. It wasn't hate. It was sort of like a, why are you being a bitch? <laughs> That's what it was. It's like, come on, Sorsha, be cool. And I was, I was legitimately trying to get her to at least be like, hey, Andy, I watched your video. I think you're a dick. Fuck off. If she gave me that, I would have been happy. It sort of made me sad that like, oh, she's mean. She's rude. She attacks people. And then when I call her out, she doesn't even have the balls to at least be like, hey, I watched your video, screw off. You know what I mean? That, that's what upset me. Yeah, right. That's what upset me. It was sort of like the, and when you had messaged me and you were like, all right, let's talk. I was like, yeah, cool, man. Like, that's awesome. I'm, I'm pumped for this. And, I'm, I'm, and I was telling all your people, like, I'm ready to learn. I want to I wanna have a perspective that I've never seen before. Because I've given people who are sad and depressed perspectives of happiness. Yeah. I had a flood in my house three weeks ago. My mattress was on the floor because my ex-girlfriend oh, took the bed. I had no bed. My TV was on the floor because I was moving it. My PS3 was destroyed. I lost a lot of boxes that were packed up ready for my move, which is happening in nine days. And you know what? I was depressed for an hour. And when I was standing in the flood and I was about to you know, like thinking horrible thoughts. I thought in my head, you know what I am? I'm a starving artist. I've always wanted to be one of these. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that, that was the anger towards Sorsha. It wasn't a like fucking vegans. It was, um, come on, why are you not responding to me when I, like you wanted a reaction. I gave you a reaction and now you're hiding. You know well, what I mean? This, um, you didn't see your dad between, you're saying, uh, I think that's how I understood the story, between telling him, we'll talk when you get a heart attack, and him having the heart attack. And then, yeah, him in the hospital, yeah, because he, he had happened the was, What happened there was, is like, you said that, and like, I don't know if your mum's in the room or whatever at this point, I don't know your fucking family situation or whatever, but like, to your mum, you would have come across the same way uh, Sorsha does to you now, but because you were you in that situation, you could see you were coming at it from a place of just like, I don't know how to fucking express myself to you, but this is really fucking serious. And I'm so frustrated that I've just got to tell it so straight that it's going to hurt your feelings a bit. And maybe that's the reason why he had a heart attack. And rather than just eating the same shit again, he's starting to get healthy. Well, 
actually my I think my whole family was in the room and I was like I remember looking at him and he had a really like he was a he's very like he has my body type you know like you know skinny and whatever but his stomach was like like just gone like out yeah and I said it in front I told I said it to him in front of my mom every time I was like and at first I was encouraging. I was like, come on, I'll help you work out. I'll teach you how to do it and blah, blah, blah. And to be honest with you, like, I'm happy he had the heart attack because now he's so super healthy. His veins had a recharge, obviously. And his m mental health is better because of quitting smoking and drinking. Um, so it, it was like hitting rock bottom. You know what I mean? But you know how many people just like, they get into this slump where like talking about depression and stuff where... They just kept on a chemical level, like, and what's going on in their body. They're so fucked with cholesterol and all these other things from animal products. Um, along with the denial and the whole mental trip that you have to have where you go, this is okay because other, if it isn't, that's not good for me. Because <laughs> to think about that, so I can't let that go yet. All of that head fuck, man, puts people into a state of depression and makes them unhealthy. And what happens is it's like they end up just giving up on themselves where they go, Oh, this is just genetics. So like, this is what happens in life. This is like this is how I die. They don't think, oh, I can be rescued at this point. And when uh, fucking hell, man, Sorsha and um, <laughs> oh my god, sorry, that's funny. <laughs> terrible. It's um, or like vegan gains just being ruthless as fuck, man. It comes from that same frustration of just going, I am not yet equipped with the tools to fully express myself. Um, but at least I'm going to get you pissed off. Uh, from now on, you're not going to be indifferent about it. You're going to go, hang on, why is there rape in animal things? Like, I'll ask the woman at work. Like, it just starts to like, trigger the indifference to become hate. And hate is not a bad thing. Hate is not like depression. Hate is where you actually care and you want to get involved and you go, how can we make this better? You know, like, this is kind of pissing me off. It's, and it's not just going, oh, I can deal with this. Like, if your dad hated the way his fucking body was, he would have changed it. But he was indifferent towards it until he had that fucking wake up moment. And so, here's the thing. So let, let's just go, let's backtrack for a moment. Like, the reason people get pissed off with people drinking milk is when you fucking connect with how fucked up it is, they rape those cows. And I'm not talking about a human and bestiality and then sticking their dick in a fucking cow's vagina or the fucking anus of a cow ever. Uh -huh. What they do is it's a process called artificial insemination where the cows never actually have sex. They, uh, get a, they get like a bread ball to ejaculate and they, they document all the fucking like, you know, where's this ball from, who's it related to compared to all the other fucking cows and stuff. And they'll just have like one master ball for like a year for an area that just impregnates all the cows. They freeze it in these fucking little cylinders and then it's someone's job to stick their hand up inside the cow through like the anus to like kind of push the needle into place like the, cow, the bull's dick would be. Uh, I say both, like cow isn't the term for female, but it's, uh, I mean, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. So it's bovine, basically. Bovine fucking semen in this cow. And, um, and then it's fucking pregnant. And the reason they do that is because um, just, oh, I'm going to get harsh here. And this isn't like to be like yo mama jokes or whatever, or to make it personal. It's just the best way to fucking explain it is when your mum got pregnant with you, as soon as you give birth, she starts breastfeeding, right? And then over a period of time of about two years, like, or maybe six months or whatever the fuck, like, you will wean off breastfeeding. And every day, from the first day that she gives colostrum, which is the first milk a mother gives their child, which has, like, extra bacteria to create your immune system, um, from that moment onwards, it's always depleting the amount of milk that they make. So what they do in the dairy industry is as soon as a cow is given birth, they impregnate them again so they'll be ready to be pregnant to create more milk because their milk's going to dry up. So they call it artificial insemination, but I've been to dairy farms, man, and like I've filmed, like, I just fucking, like, I get involved, I go undercover a bit and pretend I'm not vegan and stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> cool. I want to just know, like, is this shit on the internet? Is this documentary telling me the truth? And I go there and it's usually fucking worse than the documentary show me and it's like, some fucking guys and they're just like sterilizing all the milk pumping equipment that sucks the stuff that is meant for their calves they take the calves away if they're male they can't get milk out of the calves so they they put them in a crate for three and a half months what uh, so where, they, where 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 like on the farm 
they have it's called veal crates, okay? And the reason they do that is it keeps the muscles tender because it's like a delicacy for rich people. But if they run around, they develop a different kind of muscle. So they keep them in crates for three and a half months before killing them. And then people eat as like a luxury food, veal. Okay? I, I've had veal before, yes. I've yes, I'm talking before. about it. Like, I've never tasted it, so you've got a different connection with it. Wait, wait, hang on. So yeah. let me get this straight. They get a baby cow and they trap it in a box and yes. then just three months later they kill it and they sell it to rich people as a delicacy what okay here's the, the next thing is like, oh, so the females um they give them as many hormones as they can this isn't in all farms but uh and the, the female, sometimes they're allowed to breastfeed from the, their mother for uh, like the first couple of weeks just to get big because it makes them more money. It's not out of kindness. Uh, but also because of the stress it causes the cow. Because as soon as they rip the males away from the cow to take them to the veal crates, cows for about two weeks just do this fucking call, cool, like, give me my child back. It's like they're fucking crying over it, okay? And then what happens, these are fucking intelligent animals. You've hung out with them as a kid. You know that they've got personalities. They're kind of like... They're like a fucking tribe of these animals that have their own thoughts. We've genetically mutated them through breeding them for the, the purpose of giving us milk and meat. Uh, milk is basically subsidizing the cost of meat because if they didn't create milk, then we'd have to like pay for their whole life without any yeah, subsidy. Yeah, yeah. Just the same way that chickens, you don't get any male chickens in the chicken rearing industry. They're like uh, It's all hens and there's no cocks, okay? So it's... Uh, and what they do is they sex the chickens. Um, you can only tell when a chick is male about like uh, a day into them being born because they immediately start to like develop these like fluffy feathers that are slightly different from the other ones. These cute little fucking chicks, man. Doesn't matter if they're cute or whatever. But yeah. Yeah. They're in a fucking. They push them through on these fucking like. They're basically in tubs, and there's like sort of sixty to a tub, and there's factory workers with the fucking gloves on and the mask and all that shit, the hairnet, and they pick them up. And if any of them have got like the slightly longer bits of fluff on their thing, they chuck them into another crate. That goes down a conveyor belt, and then they get ground up alive because oh, they've got. Oh God! If you see my face right now, it's not good. <laughs> like, so, like I, I'm filming this for my channel, obviously for the podcast, but yeah. Oh, you're that's so sad. Well, it'd be like complimentary if anyone listens to this and they can like they can pick up on yours if they want to see the. Yeah, if you ever want to see my expressions, like it went from like when we started, happy, defensive, <laughs> to horrified. Yeah. Like, yeah, but, like if you ever like if you want to like just when this is on my channel, skim through just to see how my my oh, feel, dude, my watch. feelings have become horrific. That's a good like sort of like art installation where you hear it and then you get to see the guy's face the second time around. I'd encourage them to watch all the fucking way through if they enjoyed it. This. Uh... Oh my. Yeah. Okay. So Matt, so, um, here's the thing: like your mum produced milk when she gave birth to you. There was probably like a two-year window where she was creating milk. Imagine if someone else was selling her milk off as a commodity against her will, and to after you're born, you get taken away, you get fucking killed. And like, I, I'm explaining it on this level because it helps people relate if I just say, this is you, you instead of the fucking cow for some mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. And like, basically it's, um, and if I said like, your mum doesn't get raped, she gets artificially inseminated by a guy who gets her pregnant to steal her milk. You'd be mm -hmm. like, dude, that's fucking rape. Like in your mind, that'd be like, apparently you're dead in this fucking hypothetical version. Imagine you're still alive and you're pissed off about this. You're the fucking, the veal calf that survived or whatever you're um and the thing is like cows live to like the oldest cow is something like 44 in ireland that's been documented and uh that's like on modern day farming basis like cows used to be these massive creatures called auroxids and basically we've bred them to become weaker and more docile uh through each generation they selectively breed them to try and get them bigger and they're giving them these fucking uh, they basically give the cows like a version of uh, growth hormone, so it's like steroids for cows to get more meat out of them, to create more milk, uh, just to create so that the females, the males actually have it easier by being killed three and a half months in, in a crate. The female then goes on to replace their mother, and then their mother gets taken off at four years old, fucking executed in a slaughterhouse, humanely apparently, fucking throat slit upside down, bolt in the head, like whatever you want to call humane. And then the fucking, then the, her fucking calf, the female calf, replaces her, and as soon as they're ready at an age of around about two years old, 
having taken these hormones, like these um, bovine growth hormones, BGH, it's, um, they just fucking replace a mother and it's on a two year fucking loop where they just keep getting replaced. They get fucking raped, uh, just the same by some anonymous fucking bull that's been selected. Like they pay for the semen, they, a man sticks it into their rectum and they actually, this is what I was going to say, I've been on dairy farms. Uh-huh. They call the things that they trap the cows in when they stick the fucking bull semen up their ass rape racks like the actual dairy farmers call them rape racks rape racks they know what the, they refer to it and it's like a kind of jokey thing like oh yeah it's the rape rack and in a way it's like them saying oh it's not really rape and we're so comfortable about saying that to the point we can call it a rape rack when actually it's just them trying to deny that they're fucking sticking their hand up a cow's anus to make money out of her milk that's meant for her young that it's never gonna fucking get oh my fucking god! <laughs> That's what. Like, and what are you? Could I like, ask you too, um, just really quick about the? What about organic milk? Oh god, this is gonna be a, that, That's a dumb question, isn't it? No, no, like no, because I fucking used to think this because I I come from the milk, but I'm embarrassed that I used to be like, oh, dairy cows make milk for us, <laughs> and we need it for our bones because otherwise, how we get calcium? I felt I feel like a fucking idiot because not only did I think that, I went around to other fucking kids like when I was fourteen, I was like. I know you should drink milk, it's really good for you, man. <laughs> and it's fucking like, the, it's, milk is designed to grow a calf big and strong for the first couple of years of its life. To like, and then you look around America with these fucking obese people eating fucking cheese and milk. And then you've got Furious Pete like doing these fucking like routines where he's just drinking oil, drinking fucking milk, like all this cheese fucking lasagna, whatever. Epic meal time, the fucking like food versus meal. What the fuck's that guy called? Like uh, man versus food. Like, all these people, man, and they're just glamorizing their fucking greed while they ignorantly uh, consume something that was meant for another animal that's designed to grow that animal's young, and then it's making them unwell, and they're glamorizing it as a lifestyle. And then Vegan Gain says, fuck Furious Pete, he lost a testicle because he's doing this, and he doesn't even see it yet, but not only is he doing this, he's promoting it to a fucking million, two million, whatever his audience is. And, like... And just because he wants to sell his fucking product and he's in denial about it. And that pisses him off, man. It pisses me off. to like, Because I think Furious Pete, to some level, fucking knows what he's doing. Yeah, and you know what? Like, something that I definitely... Here's also a thing why I watch the vegan games. Because, like, all the science... All the... That's why I said I respect that he puts all, like, the science, you know, facts and all that stuff on. It's primarily because... Um, when I watch some rebuttals from, it's not many rebuttals, but there, there was that one video Furious Pete made. I forgot what it was called. I watched it the other day. And um, it was mainly him trying to explain why meat is healthy. Yeah. He had nothing. Like, he goes, like, of course meat is healthy. And then You're- sort of, like, skimmed over it, like, I'm like, okay, there's no facts being said, there's no, like, at least, like, see, but, uh, oh, God, wow, okay. He lost a fucking testicle, and he's still continuing the same lifestyle that lost him a testicle. Well, I he just... One I- testicle left to fucking redeem himself, and he's, he's choosing to take the route that means he's a tragedy instead of, like, a fucking turnaround story. I, I heard, now... Uh, this is the most unreliable source, by the way. Uh, <laughs> it was YouTube comments. <laughs> like, that's literally, like, that's like hearing a homeless, like, person go, like who's on drugs, on crack, a crackhead, going, like, ah, and then taking it as fact. But yeah. <laughs> I read a YouTube comment that said, on one of the vlogs, Furious Pete said he got, he had testicular cancer, when he was anorexic and he just didn't know about it until he got it removed when he found out. Like, He's, like, Furious Pete probably developed it when he started taking steroids and lying about it when it fucked with the whole... That's, okay, that's one major thing I wanted to ask. Do you? So you guys are convinced steroids? Do you know what steroids do? Well, okay, well, but I, I know what they do. Well, they make they you all... Okay, okay science, science-wise, no, but right, I, me, I know the negative effects for sure. What happens is, it's like, your balls create testosterone, right? It's actually, like, where the hormone gets created, and all cancers are to do with 
um, tumorous growths where basically cells that are meant to keep dividing or like passing on genetic information to the next cell that's being created as it sort of falls apart and falls off, you turns to dust, whatever. Um, it's your regeneration process. So it's, it's the blueprints being passed on to the next cell. And one of the things that regulates how you're meant to grow, like if you've had a few days of physical exercise, you've ripped some muscle, like your body's going, okay, maybe we need to build a bit more muscle where that rip was and then you develop muscles, right? Yeah. So yeah. what happens is like you, all these hormones regulate growth and um, testosterone is uh, made in the testicles, uh, like it's re partly regulated by the testicles. Uh, that's the hormone that gets created there, hence the testes, testosterone, testicles. And... Um, and basically, when you start taking steroids, you go on like a 12-week program, nine-week program, whatever, you start taking like basically um, stuff where you're putting it into your bodies, and then your body goes, oh, we don't need to make this anymore. We are like, I don't need to, whatever, man. <laughs> I don't need to make this anymore because, um, you know, there's an external source coming in. There's already too much of it. Uh, and so you get the testosterone that's like part of the muscle building, like that whole kind of... Uh, information these anabolic steroids and then um, what happens is is your balls stop producing testosterone and people joke about people on steroids having small dicks it's actually small testicles their balls shrivel up and when they come off the steroids because it takes about two weeks roughly for the balls to suddenly go oh hang on there's no external testosterone coming back in we need to start creating it again there's a two-week gap where people have an emotional fucking breakdown because they don't have any testosterone going into their system. And they either just stay on the steroids for life, which is what a lot of these people do once they've got into it. Like most people do steroids for life once they're in because they can't handle that two week come down and the, the, the recovery time. But a lot of people just get really fucking emotional and feminine where they just start crying at fucking like, you know, like the dog orphanage adverts or whatever. And they're just like, there's something, it's like they basically develop like this sort of more aligned to a feminine sort of chemical system in their body and it fucking freaks them out because it's almost like having a sex change for two weeks with the sort of hormones that they've got flying around wow. and so furious pete is someone who's lied about taking steroids to create the physique he's got in order to get an audience to say to sell whey, whey powder and what whey powder is is the reason it's so cheap to produce is because it's a waste material that the dairy industry has never known what to do with because when you make cheese, you like the cheese and then you get the whey water, which is basically this very fine fucking like, it's the stuff that like rises to the top. You can't do anything with it. And what they've started to do is extract it in the from the water using a filtration system. And then they used to like pay to get it destroyed, like in a fucking incinerator. And it was like, for the cost of cheese, they'd have to include the cost of incinerating the whey and getting rid of it. Because if it goes into the water system, it fucking destroys the environment all around it. So... You, you get charged to get rid of your fucking waste whey. And what happened was, is because the whey is high in like fully formed protein, uh, you know, animal protein from the animal as this waste material, people realized that they could basically um, like take it off the company for free or just pay the smallest amount. Like we're just going to turn up in a van, we'll take it away, we're not going to charge you to fucking get rid of it. And then we're going to have this powder and sell it as whey protein to bodybuilders. And then throw in like, flavor throw in some fucking flavor throw in some fucking like whatever mix of chemicals that the latest one is you know chocolate flavor vanilla flavor all that shit we're going to stick it in a tub and then the guy who looks like he's made it in terms of like oh wow he must have real good like self-discipline who's actually on fucking steroids and fucked with his testicles fucking testosterone levels lied to everyone about the process he's gone through just to fucking sell the waste material from the raped fucking animals that everyone's learned not to care about. Oh my god. Pure that pure. is... But, but are, are we 100% sure that he's doing steroids? Yeah, I am. You, you're, you're convinced. What, what's, what's the... What's the... What's the... The thing in your heart that says... Yeah, there's steroids involved. Dude, everyone's taking steroids who's a fucking like role model athlete. Like you just look like a fucking wimp compared to these people unless you do it. The reason Furious Pete's got big fucking traps and all that shit, some point he will have taken steroids. I don't think he's on them all the time. He's probably a bit more regulated. But because he's had to come on and off steroids and he's not as big as the other dudes who are always on it, he's fucked with his, he's gone through that two week window of his testicles 
having to reproduce. He's fucked with their hormonal, just like the way they work naturally. He's got testicular cancer and he's like, don't worry guys, I'm going to be okay. Keep buying my product. That's how I fucking see it. My, my, oh God. God. Well, you know what? Like a really interesting thing is like, I'm, while I'm not like huge, I'm very strong. When I head yeah. to the gym, I, I've never taken steroids. It's yeah. obvious. <laughs> but um, uh, I've been working out for three years. And I'm like, you know, I, I curl, you know, 40 pounds. I'm doing like, I'm benching 130. I'm doing all the, all the pretty heavy weights, tri uh, triceps on the machine, 100 pounds. And there's guys who are really huge at my gym who are doing the same weight as me. And that's why in my head, I'm like, oh, they're huge. Therefore, they must just eat a lot of calories and protein. So then in my head, I go, all right, time to track my calories, trying to up everything. And when I did that, I got chubby. Like my face got chubby. My stomach got chubby. And I'm like, God damn it. And Okay, let me just interrupt for a sec because like, here's the fucking... Here's a big one. Like this is probably the heaviest bit so far. I'd say because like, and this isn't necessarily vegan related, but um, to to like not to be open to hear this one, you have to accept that at some point in your life you were gullible and you were a victim. Which is no one wants to fucking hear that about themselves, man. That's a hard one to swallow, you know. And it's um, the reason that you felt like you were getting you you're getting laid more when you started to get big and stuff is partly because that's how girls perceive guys based on the false advertising of people like Furious Pete and all these whey powder protein in exactly the same way that magazines tell girls that they're meant to be anorexic. Oh, oh well, you know what, man? Like, as per, like, like social, uh, like, women and all that type of stuff, I have, I have a, lot of, a lot of views on feminism and yeah. women, how they treat men, sort of, like, relationships the social dynamics of that. And I did find, while I'm not like jacked, the more muscular I've gotten, the more confident I become. And you, like, you saw me, giant beard, I have a ponytail, I got my surfer <laughs> hair, uh, and um, I have this confidence, and I, I don't care. I, I like, like when women try and play games, I, I you know, next. And I've gotten laid a lot because of just my personality and confidence. Yeah. Not saying I'm ladies, man. Just saying when there's a hundred girls in a room, I know which one of that hundred wants me purely by feeling. You know what I mean? I'm very into energy and understanding how people feel and all that. And I guess the one thing was I wanted to really... That's why I never hated Sorsha because or or vegan gains. Like a lot of meat eaters are like, fuck them, they're pussies, this and that. I that's why I sort of wanna understand yeah. ve uh, veganism. I always do this. <laughs> I, I always jump from thing to thing and sort of try and understand everything. You know what I mean? Like I'll be like, oh, now I'll start start watching um atheism videos. Let's try and understand atheists. Right? Oh, now I'll start watching vegan videos. Let's understand vegans. And yeah. vegans really ticked me off on that sense of what, everything I've explained. You know what I mean? But the thing is, you'd be indifferent towards it if there wasn't some truth in there, I think. Like, 100%. Yeah. You're, well, that's, that's also a reason why I take Warrior Blend, uh, friggin' the most disgusting tasting protein I've ever had. <laughs> Raw protein, plant based. And now I love it because like uh, rice-based protein is what really got me into enjoying that chalky flavor. I don't <laughs> mind it. I like it. It's like, mmm, chalk. Yeah. Chalk and strawberries and blueberries. Mmm. <laughs> but yeah. um, and now whey protein, I find it, it makes me have a really upset stomach and I'm, I'm on the toilet for a while. I'm, you know, gas like crazy. And when I have milk, it's instantly like, all right, today's going to be a gas day. That's why I stopped that, right? Um, yeah, man, you're fucking, you, ah, uh, you know what, man? I promised this to myself, okay? And I told a few people at work. Okay. If vegan revolution makes me think different about 
vegans and meat eaters and the process that I would try and become vegan for one month and <laughs> and uh-huh. then and then end with because I'm very I'm very strong willed. That's a thing. Like if I'm gonna quit smoking again, I'll quit. Like, like meaning when I did, I'll quit smoking. If I want to quit something, I'll do it. If I want to, like I, uh, to work out every day for an hour to an hour and a half, I'm like I'm gonna do it. My dad even said like Andy, I don't know how you. I'm gonna fucking do it. Good I'm out. going to veganize myself if that's a word, which is not, but whatever. Just, just listen to this. Like, I'm sorry to interrupt. No worries. Like, no worries. Just think like. Um, what you're talking about in terms of like, you can see the mistakes maybe from your point of view that like happy, healthy vegan does it a bit this way and vegan gains does it a bit too much this way. And like, the thing is each person that becomes vegan and suddenly wakes up to it and goes, fuck man. Like, and when they really accept how much, and there's some very passive vegans and they just want to be vegan. They don't want to tell other people about it or whatever, but there's some people who've got those personalities, like those kind of YouTube personality type people who want to, when they understand something, they want to share it with other people, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I, I think um, what you're talking about, being able to stop people being depressed by just like, almost like reprogramming their brain to something that benefits them more rather than the fucking thoughts that they've got themselves looping in and trapped in. Um, that's sort of like, basically what I'm trying to do is create a vegan community where each person's got value in this, the way they tell that story. Whether it is fucking vegan gain saying like, oh, your boyfriend commits suicide because you're fat, which is like a real <laughs> fucking harsh level, man. You've got social, yeah. she's being sarcastic, but you've got the fuck, like, is his name Ryan, Ryan and Angie, the fucking happy, healthy vegan people. And they're kind of like, they're like the Wayne's World buddy kind of end of fucking veganism where they're like, hey man, like, we're going to talk about veganism, like, wherever you're at, that's cool. Like, <laughs> you know, they're on that fucking wavelength. But like, I think it needs all these different voices. And there's other people starting to appear now. I just talked to a guy who's like a recovering heroin addict last night who started spreading his message. Oh, I know him, uh, the one with the uh, shaved head, right? Uh, pink hair. <laughs> oh, pink hair? Never mind. <laughs> okay. Yeah, guys, maybe there's a couple of them, but I suppose it's, uh, you know, and um, I'm just kind of watching this community blossom, you know, and there's some people who are coming out from health reasons and some people for the ethics, but I think eventually you have to come to both, whichever one you came from first. So whether like you go, oh, this is really ethical, you go, but yeah, I've got to look after my body. You learn the biology of it all. And it starts to make sense, and then you look after yourself better. May I tell you, okay, because I, I did, I legitimately came to this conversation with the hopes that you would at least give me some reason to at least try and be do it for one month, right? And oh, my, you, and my buddy, by the way, he was a dick about it. He goes, yeah, well, I'm going to fry bacon in front of you, like, all the time, which, yeah. which I'm not even a big bacon fan, like... It's just, you know what I mean? Um, That's Paul Amitar. That's someone who's so, like, they could never be a comedian, man, because they can't get on stage and express themselves in a kind of way where they can be vulnerable and show that side that comedian needs. They always have this kind of, like, Ugh, like bacon. Ugh, here's some bacon vegan. It's like, yeah, but just think about the fact that it's a dead pig you're eating and, like, it's not good for you. And they're like, yeah, but bacon, though. <laughs> and you're just like, fuck, I can't get through that. And to me, it's like, when I go shopping in the supermarket, it's like a fucking zombie movie where I see all these unhealthy people stacking corpses with a barcode on it like it's fucking normal and not seeing the connection and I'm just like standing there like I just want to shout at all the people in the meat aisle and just be like wake the fuck up yeah yes. and well I, 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 I I'm gonna come across okay the the I'm gonna I, I'll do it I'm gonna do it yeah I, man. I, I'm a stone I'm a stone's throw away anyway I <laughs> all, 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 all I'll have to do is figure out how to keep my weight up, which, you know, I eat a lot of... You Dude, know. Do, let me just, like, I'll say the right things to you so that you don't have this fucking concern, like, I'm going to become this little guy so I won't look like those other guys on YouTube and then I won't get as much pussy because I won't be as confident and all that shit, or maybe I'll get stuck in another bad relationship where I just get with a fat girl who cries too much and I'll feel like a worthless piece of shit because I'm too skinny and I'll just stay in it for a few years. This might have happened to me at some point. Yeah. It's, uh, it's all of that kind of shit that's like you don't want to like you don't want to feel like you're going backwards into that. And like the skinny thing feels like instead of progress, it's like regressing backwards into something you already know that you didn't make you happier. Just look at a fucking mountain gorilla, dude. It sits, it eats all day, it eats fucking leafy green vegetables, and it'd kill you if it had to. Like, and you wouldn't, you'd get fucking destroyed by that mountain gorilla. I'm talking some silverback fucking mountain gorilla. It has basically the same digestive system as you. Really? Okay, so you're saying this. 
Okay, yep. so, so I'm I'm gonna experiment with this, and and here's what I'll 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 keep you updated. I'll I'll, I'll let you know how I'm doing. Well, hang on, I'm I'm gonna create a fucking program for you if we're doing this. I'm gonna keep it. I'm, I'll be your fucking your vegan Dude, right, fairy. All mother. right, you know what, Kate? You <laughs> you do this. I'm gonna definitely make a video about this. Uh, in a shorter, I mean, I'm gonna put the podcast up on my channel, and then I'm gonna do, do like a little, you know, a follow up in like a week uh, to be like, oh, he here's what happened if you didn't watch that podcast. Yeah. Just be because right. you know, longer videos, people skip. Uh, you know, like Dude, the, you, well, some people just watch me for dumbest ever, for example. People contact me on my podcast and they go, I really like your podcast, but can you make them like 20 minutes long instead of four hours? Yeah, yeah. So that's, but, but, but I, oh, yeah. I, yeah. No, I, like, I don't respect my audience at all when it comes to that. Cause I'm like, this is my fucking art form. And if you're some bratty child who needs your mum to come and cut your meal into smaller slices so that you can stick uh. <laughs> like, it, like, I don't want you here, do you know what I mean? And I think like some people have gone, oh, okay, maybe I'll just like, I'll pause it and listen to it in 20 minute chunks myself. Like, but I'm just like, but I do agree, like you, I got a bit full on with it, but you do have to create a happy medium where for people who do enjoy what you've got to say, but don't have that time thing, you do need those little summaries or just like, another format for those people i guess so that's cool that you're planning that really. well well and also too i'll i'll do it for a week and well i'm gonna do it for 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 a while however in a week i'm going to do an update yeah and then go if you didn't watch that episode this was the conversion of andy worski okay <laughs> like this was what happened and yeah. and i'm gonna do it not for anyone i mean like like I, the, the, that's what it is too. It's it's the fear of going backwards. It's the fear of of like now I have to be fully conscious about what what happens to my body. It's painful. The, most people are scared of it because they go, I don't want to feel like I was wrong. But as soon as you accept that that was wrong, you start living right, and it's like it's just that fucking limbo. And it only it can it's an epiphany. It happens in a moment where you just go okay, I'm just going to let that go now. And it just takes all fucking weight off your shoulders. But I'm not going to sell it to you as in like being vegan is real fucking easy. Like that first month, you're going to just, you're going to find that people treat you differently. They're going to be like, oh, he's a fucking vegan now. And they're going to be like, hey, you're a pussy. Like, and well, it'll be well, people... Well, that, oh, oh, hang on, dude, with, with that, that's, that's no problem. You I, have... I, I just grew my hair out and I wore a hat for a while. I've never had long hair in my uh, life. Now I have a ponytail. It's like very surfer. I love it. And people are like, you cut your hair, hippie. And, and like my response is, well, I'm getting a lot of pussy because of it. So are you? No? Then shut the fuck up. Or people are like, hey, shave your beard off. I'm like, I look, I like it because like I look older with it. And that's my personal. And oh, you look homeless. Good. I look homeless. Great. Like I... Honestly, what people think of me is the last thing I care about. You know what I mean? By their validation, if you fucking know yourself, because it just comes down to the fact like some people be like, why are you doing that? You're a dick. And then you just go like, well, I want to do it. And I've thought it through and here's the reasons. And they just go, oh, fuck you. And you just, it doesn't affect you because you know yourself. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Well, I, I, I've always found that something that in my mind, especially when I started YouTube was people would be like, do this. And I'm like, okay. Do this and believe me, man. Girls, when I, I used to walk all over me, used to walk all over me. Hey, like, like you know what? You Not know feeling of being in trouble. Like, oh, okay. I'm gonna go home. I'm a bit late. She's gonna be pissed off at me. I don't have that. The the moment I I awakened from that, and my girlfriend's like, "Are you gonna do this thing?" Like, for example, my ex. Uh, her thing was. I want you to get a new job so we can go on vacations. Oh, and then, exactly. So, I, so, so I'm oh, like, I'm, yeah. I, I, at the moment I stepped back into YouTube, I got a few sponsors. I, yeah. uh, you know, the YouTube checks going up and I'm like, I want to do this. This is what I do. This is my passion. Yeah. This is my thing. And then the moment I broke up with her, it has now come to the point that in about one month, my rent and bills are paid with YouTube and, Whole, and Whole Foods is, is all, all extra money. That's cool as fuck. Yeah, exactly. So if she had just shut her fucking mouth, <laughs> sorry, if she had <laughs> shut her mouth and it, like all this abuse 
mental anguish, stressing me out, and waited, she would have seen that my dream is being accomplished right now because I, I plugged my ears and went forward. You know what I mean? Dude, here's the thing. There's so many guys out there with the personality where they could be paying for their rent off YouTube by now. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. They took their fucking girlfriend, and now they're just like, they're just working at Whole Foods, and that covers the rent. And they're still with that girl, and, and she's like, oh, like, can, can you do extra hours so we can pay for a wedding? <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, and, and also, she was, uh, she wanted to, like, do vacations. We went to Cuba last year in like whatever, November. And then three months later, she was going with her family and she's like, do you want to go again? And I'm like, well, I can't afford it. And <laughs> she got mad at me because I couldn't, I couldn't go to Cuba three months later after going there. <laughs> and I was paying 75% of the rent to help her pay off her car. So I pretty much paid off her car and I was paying the internet without any of her help. And I was paying for everything. And I looked at her one day and I'm like, what else do you want from me? What else do you fucking want from me? So not only that breaking up with her has now made me richer because I got more profit, but now my YouTube is at a point where in a few months, in a month or so, because looking at the statistics, how they're growing, I'm going to pay rent doing what I love doing. <laughs> Beautiful, man. That's and, a great. And, and then you, and then you apply that that thought to people out there about going vegan or about just being healthy in general. Like, well, I think like if your message is happiness, like that encompasses a lot of things, and that can be just like sleeping the right amount, just fucking not associating with relationships that fuck you over, but you're not telling the full story unless you include what you're putting in your body and the mental disconnect you have from basically paying for animals to be slaughtered. Like, you can't be happy knowing that that goes on. You can be ignorant about it in a way where you just don't know anything about it, but once you know, you can never fully be happy knowing you know and not reacting to the fact you know. Uh, well, you know, it, it's, it's a very disgusting feeling to hear those things that you had said. Um, yeah. And also a... Um, uh, at work, we watched something called The Whole Story, which was like a documentary about how Whole Foods started. It was very interesting. I liked it a lot. And yeah. they, you know, went over the the animal welfare process of how... Yeah. And it kind of, like, eased that, like, oh, they're dying. But it is okay. still... It, believe me, man. Believe me. Even as... Well, now... Uh, let's say Andy Worski right now I am a vegan for one month with the regimen that you will give me and I will report back to you and we'll maybe do a podcast in a month and I'll talk about my findings. I'll track my weight. I'll track all that stuff. And yeah. But when I was a meat eater, I was still sad when I thought of chickens being killed or cows being killed. Because it's yeah. an animal. You know, I have a cat. I love my cat. I hold like a little baby and I kiss her. And, um, uh, but the moment the meat was on the plate, it, yeah. that was gone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I didn't associate a piece of steak on the plate as a cow. Because my brain has disconnected it so much, you know what I mean? So, it, vegan, you'll hear vegans talk about it, like the moment they made the connection, because it's not like a transition or like a period of time, it's just like an epiphany where they just go, oh fuck, I can't see that other than, that's no longer food anymore, that's just a corpse. That, that's, there's a switch that happens. I'll tell you what man, like, like my audio recorder's getting a bit fucking low on battery. Yeah, no it's worries, like, yeah, I was going to say too, it's, oh, it's pretty long now. <laughs> It's two in the morning here, and um, like if you check your uh, Skype fucking, uh, you know, the message boxes, I've just sent you a link to a video that I've uh, I've only put out via Dropbox, like uh, for people to watch. Uh, it's forty minutes long, and I basically edited it, and it's it's not like a there, there is a structure there in it for people who appreciate the editing of like some people watch it while looking at their phone or whatever, and they don't fucking get there's a plot, but it's like a sort of psychological experiment on yourself to. You know, like when someone smokes and then they go, oh, you should smoke a hundred in one day just so you never do it again. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, funny story. My dad, when he was the heart attack day, I heard the heart attack and I went into my garage. I had, I think, 11 cigarettes in a row because I knew the next day I would not smoke. 
Okay, so like, what I, this film is like every lie you've ever been told by an advert or some fucking documentary or whatever, edited into a, like a story where the words start to like spell out things, but you're just seeing all the lies connected for 40 minutes, like some fucking clockwork orange, hold your eyeballs open. Okay. And okay. Um, it's like, instead of just being like, oh, that advert was a bit weird and like, oh, here's the next thing I'm going to watch on TV. It's like you just stare at all the adverts until you just go like, I've been fucking lied to my whole life. All right, so, I'll, I'll definitely check it out, man. It's called Bliss is Ignorance, and it opens with a bit of Louis C.K., so you'll be down for it, man. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you be, this, uh, I don't know, like, how do we end this? Like, um, I suppose, like, if you're going to document veganism, give a shout-out to your fucking channel. Let's do that, because this is, um, you know, like, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to either be rooting for you. that You're going to get some fucking cunty little vegans who are going to be like, oh, you should throw your shoes out because they're made of leather. And it's like, dude, like, he's just fucking done it yesterday. <laughs> man, they're called the vegan police, and they'd like. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go that far, because <laughs> I'm poor and I don't have that much money. Like, I have to like still be cool with my money. You know what I mean? I just went through like a divorce, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, like, it took me about two years to throw away some leather trainers. So, like, my expectations of you is like, even if you slip up in the first week and you're like, oh, there's a pizza. It was late. I was fucking. I was underfueled. I was tired, and I fucking ate the pizza. That that's part of the process. That's not like oh you failed, mm. but like there are going to be like if you give a shout out to your channel to the vegans that follow me, you are going to get a few who are just like oh but he's still wearing fucking like a leather wristwatch, you know. And it's just like I will alongside you tell those people to go fuck themselves because those just don't you. help anyone, man. Uh, but at the same time, like this film, hopefully will like. Um, it's not so much about the ethics or the welfare of the animals. It's just about like that moment where you make the connection where you go, I've been fucking lied to and it's embarrassing to keep accepting those lies. So uh, it's called Bliss is Ignorance. It's about 40 minutes long. Um, but the thing is, like, it's really important to understand that veganism is not a diet. It's a lifestyle because it does end up being about like, I'm not going to buy animal tested shampoo because there's fucking labs of monkeys having shit rubbed into their eyes and then cut open. Like, and you just, you do open up a very dark world of just like, this is what humans do to other living beings purely for money without any real other motivation behind it. Um, and that's a fucking dark place to go to, man. But that's what, that's where you're going to be at for the next few days. And I'll fucking, I'll coach you for it. Maybe we'll have a three way Skype conversation with, uh, Sorsha. How, you know how happy is she going to be? <laughs> How happy is she gonna be like, wait, what? That fucking asshole? <laughs> He's you know trying think, it out? <laughs> you know what? I think her initial reaction was like, that was like the first time someone had made a YouTube video uh, about her that had like a big following or whatever. And like, I think she just contacted me because she, she was like, oh wow, this just suddenly got real. This is like proper YouTuber shit where like it becomes yeah, like yeah. that. And like, it's only happened like, you know, I don't know when you put the video up, like whether it was like. Two days ago. Yeah, well, there you go. So it's still kind of fresh. And I'm sure, like, there's a conversation to be had with her. And you might find yourself watching that same uh, video of hers in, like, three months down the line and just thinking, like, this is the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. Like, yeah. after, like, all these guys come up to you and they're like, oh, you should eat some bacon. You'll probably grow a vagina if you eat it. Like, oh, but you need it for brain development. And, like, oh, where would you get your protein from? See, and you're see, like, see, but I'm one of those guys who'd be like, oh, you're trying veganism? Well, you're... You're going to have a vagina, and I'd be like, yeah, well, I love vagina, so fuck off. <laughs> like, I'm one of those guys who um, I, I accept. Like, if someone calls me, like, a fag, I go, yeah, whatever. Is that what you think? Maybe I'll try it one day. Like, like, oh. like, like what? The words can't hurt me. Like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm numb to words because I know it's pe everyone has their own opinion. And I, I know a lot of people have that blockage in their brain to open it for him. Like someone the other day, I was at the gym. Yeah. I, I had no spotter for uh, a okay. bench press. So yeah. I used the machine and my buddy went like, who was, who, who uh, I, I told at work, oh, I, I was doing like 130 on the machine. He's like, the machine? What are you, a pussy? I'm like, come on, man. At least I'm doing it. It's like, like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, it's too easy. I'm like, well, I had no spotter. I don't want to, Break my neck, you asshole. <laughs> like, the thing is, I'm saying just like don't lose that because the majority of people eat meat and you're going to get shit from the majority of people. And because 
by being vegan, you offend non-vegans just by existing and being healthy on a vegan diet because it means that maybe they're wrong and then therefore they have to attack you in a de in like a preemptive defensive way. So you're going to find people do treat you a bit differently. Uh, but like, try and maintain that. Fuck like, the thing is, if you become part of the fucking vegan community with the YouTube like channel you've already got and you maintain your attitude, that's an attitude that is quite sorely lacking in the vegan community where it's like, I just want you to be happy. Instead, of people are like, you cause rape and fuck you. And like, and I've done it, man. It's a phase that people go through. And if you can avoid that and maintain this, like, I want to spread happiness, yeah. Like, yeah. you're just onto a fucking winner all around, man. Like, you, you will help a lot of people. Like, you probably help a lot of people help their parents not have heart attacks like your dad did. That's how fucking real this is. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah well, I mean, my channel will definitely, is, is definitely based not only because i was sort of getting into the groove of being regular you know every friday and then every friday and every wednesday and then my now my monday day was like real talk so friday dumbest ever wednesday is creepiest ever like okay, the creepiest websites and monday was real talk so i definitely want to do i, I want to hit up you know, feminism and a few other, uh, like, atheism. Um, I'm, not, I'm not religious. Like, I just want to talk about religion uh, and all that type of stuff. But, like, this is definitely something I'm going to uh, come back to often um, and yeah. update people and see, and see what's up. But, man, you you made, like, I'm, like, I, 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 I'm trying it, man. I'm going to try it. Appreciate the fact that you're open minded enough to do that, but also respect the fact that like this was a team effort. Like vegan gains fucked off Mr. Repsy and you ended up watching Saucy's video and now we had this conversation. But ultimately it comes down to the fact that you're in a place in your life where you are open minded enough to not just be like to not be like when the guy goes, You should eat steak in front of him and stick it on your YouTube video, you should be like, Yeah, I'll fucking do that. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Well well it's like, funny too, because I when I said if he changes my mind, I'll try it. Someone on your one of your fans uh, uh, at reply to me, oh, you're going to talk to Vegan Revolution? Watch out. He'll change you. And in my <laughs> mind, I'm like, may like, I, like I, I replied, maybe he will. Yeah. And I fuck, man. Like, you, uh, if I can maintain what's going on with my life, meaning how I look, uh, like, yeah. fuck, I, I, I'm in to try. Because if I can Engage have this, reason. who knows? Who knows? And I mean... If I feel healthier and like don't have heart palpitations when I eat meat, um, like that's something I definitely want to 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 try. And I'm you, never against trying something unless it's like Toronto. horrible. You're in Toronto, yeah. I am. Yes. Dude, like fucking vegan games is in Toronto. Maybe I'll do the interview with him, try and hook you two up, like getting fucking like sold you up a bit on the fucking. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, that'd, that'd be funny. That'd be great. <laughs> Uh, that's cool but, man Fuck. like you're a really positive message for this community even if it's just you're like you documenting your transition and then after a month you go do you know what like i was into this but like th this at least that you're giving your perspective on it through your voice mm -hmm. and um i suppose the thing that i'm basically going to load you up with a bunch of shit to watch like i'm going to give you a fucking curriculum over the next few days uh Starting with, I'm going to send you the feminist film, like the 1950s feminist film I made. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is, so you'll see the dairy thing. Like you were shocked when I was talking about it. You're going to see it, and it's it's designed to piss off feminists, so it's not really for you. But it, it sends a message. And um, I love that stuff, though. So you're you're hitting yeah. the right demo with that. <laughs> and uh, Bliss's ignorance, which is uh, basically this kind of like like I call it reappropriating footage to tell a story where you basically just pull it all off the internet and then create your story out of other bits of films and stuff. So uh, I think as a filmmaker, you'll appreciate that because it pulls references from a lot of things where you're just going to be like joining dots with it all, you know? Yeah. And um, so yeah, I'll start off with those two and then um, I'll probably hit you with the, like a lecture that someone gave in 2010 that hopefully will really just like reinforce that idea of like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> perfect, perfect. Oh, so, actually one last question uh what do i eat for dinner tonight, <laughs> I, what, tonight? um what have you got in the house man like, I, I, I have salad i have vegetables i have a, a ton of them salad um is bread okay bread's okay right <laughs> well, yeah but this, this is really beautiful actually like this might become like a regular feature like the way this goes because uh, you're going to discover that milk powder is in fucking everything and it's going to piss. It's in like crisps and stuff. Milk uh, powder? 
milk powder. There's also gelatine. That's in a lot of stuff. You know, gelatine like boiled. The gelatine is boiled animal bones until it becomes like jelly, and then they inject it with flavors. So stuff like Haribo sweets and all that sort of stuff. My God, uh, you probably won't eat that anyway. But that to me is fucking weird. Um, bread is basically okay. Um, I'm not going to hit you with like, oh, sometimes it's coated with like egg yolk and all that stuff on the f like on the fucking same discussion where you go, oh, actually, there might be something in this because that's too fucking hardcore. Like, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Th there is animal products in more shit than you realize, basically. Yeah, but yeah. Um, if you've got fucking rice in the house and some vegetables, boil them up and just like make about like one and a half times more than you think you need and just eat all of it because. If you're bodybuilding, you need a lot of energy. You've got to be thinking more like a mountain gorilla than just like some fucking anorexic vegetarian, pescatarian, whatever, trying to lose weight. Yeah, and also and also the um, uh, protein. What's a good thing? I, I have this uh, Sun Warrior Vegan Protein, raw vegan, that's got um, protein 17 grams. Yeah, just check this out. Protein is in fucking everything. Proteins in broccoli, proteins in bananas. Like, it pisses me off that vegans advertise protein. It's like... Oh, you get it from nuts and beans. Like, that's bullshit. That's basically, there's all the things you need to make protein out of amino acids in those things, but like, as well as like quinoa and stuff like that. But the truth is, if you eat a banana and then you eat an orange, you've got all the amino acids to form protein in your body. Um, just like a fossil mountain gorilla. Yeah, because basically all protein is, is like ch long chains of amino acids, and amino acids are found in all plant life. Oh my God, that's blowing my mind, man. There's a few That's fucking big truth bombs. Like, it's just like, oh shit. And okay. you know what I'll, I'll do for you, just so, just because we'll keep this going, this this yeah. conversation in like the future. Go, 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 uh, I'll use my phone and I'm gonna take a picture of all the meals I have and collage them for Dude, you, like, just to see. Keep me up. I'll be. I'll set fucking notifications on your Twitter account, and I'll just like. Anything that seems like a step in your progress that you put up, I'll just retweet it. And we'll create a hashtag like uh, from meat out of the day to fucking <laughs> vegan away. I don't know, like that. I, I didn't think you were meat out of the day because you weren't fucking Mr. Like, I eat bacon. You're like, I do care about animals, but this guy's an asshole, but I'm an asshole. And <laughs> there's a lot of like, I could see the, the conflict with you. You saw potential. You saw potential. <laughs> exactly. I saw potential. So that's the way to put it. I think I'd like, basically, I think my audio recorder is going to cut out. It might not even save the fucking Awesome. Fight. You know what, man? All right, then. It's nice meeting you, man. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll talk soon. And thank you so much for the chat, man. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you for just being open-minded because like, it gives me fucking hope in a world where like the people who are doing something righteous are in the minority. And it, it's, it's very rare to meet someone who's just like, okay, what have you got to say? Rather than like, here are my pre-existing beliefs and you will never change them. Yeah, rest, man. Man. I, I, I'm excited. I'm excited to try this. I mean, really am. I really am. Yeah, Thank cool. you so much, man. All yeah, right. I'll be sending you the links, and um, I'll just stick them in the Skype chat thing. And um, yeah, if you, uh, just to say, if you download Bliss is Ignorance, um, just fuck, pop, copy the file onto your desktop or whatever. Don't um, don't watch the movie direct from the thing, and don't fucking like Dropbox, man. You're a filmmaker. You know this shit. Don't drag it out of fucking. You're a YouTuber. You know this shit. Yes, of course, of course. But don't like because I have the shittest internet where I'm staying the next few weeks, and um, if I had to upload it again, it would take about three days, and I'd fucking cry. I, 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 I wouldn't do that to you, man. Don't worry. <laughs> don't you worry. All right. <laughs> Yeah, all right, cool. I'll send you the links. And, um, do, do you want to just give a quick shout-out to your channel for anyone who's interested in watching you document this process? Yeah, so it's uh, Andy Worski. That's A-N-D-Y-W-A-R-S-K-I. I also do comedy videos, and I also do a bashing series on Friday where I make fun of uh, uh, tweets, Facebook posts, Instagram, Snapchats, etc., etc. My, my newest one was Dumbest Selfies Ever. Check that out. It's really funny and really ridiculous. That's kind of funny because I didn't know any of that shit, but obviously I Yeah, well, if you <laughs> pop onto my channel, I have a playlist of all my... Uh, I have uh, different styles of, of comedy, so you can check, check that yeah. out if you like. And sketches as well. And yeah, that's, that's me, man. Cool. All right, check out his channel, and that's Andy. Cheers, Andy. <laughs> awesome, man. All right, peace. <laughs> Later. Peace.